in the name of Jesus drought in your life that even when it is physical rainy season it is still dry season spiritually financially and otherwise I decree and declare let the rain begin to fall let the rain begin to fall let the rain begin to fall you welcome to another spirit filled message on christocentric message if you're new to this channel i would entreat you to hit on that subscribe button and then to like this video as well i would want you to share this message across because we believe that as this message is coming forth it's going to bless you Her graces are going to be imparted onto you and then god is going to visit your home thank you for watching stay blessed because all of them fail. The difference is that when poor people confront failure, they confront failure as obstacles and stumbling blocks and they never rise. But wealthy people, in the midst of problems, they are searching for opportunities. They see it as an opportunity to learn and to re-strategize. Every rich man has failed. They have the same destiny as far as failure is concerned. The difference is that they got up, they re-strategize and move forward. Whereas the failure sat back there. Remember I gave us an example the last time. How that armed robbers can step into a place. Remember the example I gave us. Armed robbers can step in and rob a house. Rob everyone and collect their money. And break the window. And for one, it would be an opportunity for them to change the louvers. Right? And change it from the, the one you have to open manually to sliding glasses. After two years, the man has re-engineered his house. Whereas the poor man, after two years, he has all the pictures of the theft. And he's still swearing, jumping from prayer house to prayer house that the thief must return his speaker. It's two years. Two years. The Bible says, yeah, I will restore the years that the canker worm, what is my own is my own. And they are arguing, whereas the other person has moved forward. See that? Poor people, always see challenges as stumbling blocks and obstacles they hate challenges because challenges expose them to the fact that they are not there is a need to improve themselves and they hate it because they are unwilling to accept the fact that they need to improve you see let me tell you you are really poor if you are embarrassed by a, a situation that will push you to grow poor people love being local champions they hate challenges that's why they fight anybody better than them who comes around their vicinity have you seen people like that the moment they are shining and they see somebody who comes and is more competent they fight him because the person's competence will reveal a weakness in them but great people associate themselves with those who challenge them the bible says to provoke one another unto godliness if you are the best among your circle of friends, it's a sign that you are a serious local champion. Nobody is inspiring you. Remember, I told us, I don't know if you was here or one of the meetings. If this is a class and we write a test over 100 and the highest gets 14, was he the highest? But did he pass? And now the person says, I'm receiving speech and prize because I'm the highest. What did you get? 14. And then he takes that same result to write Y and, and get F. And says, no, it's not fair. I used to be the highest in my school. That's not the issue. What was the standard? Are you seeing that now? So you can compare yourself with mediocre, and because you are the best among them, you think the gates of prosperity will just open. No, sir. It doesn't happen that way. There is a cutoff point in life that you must cross for this money to enter your hand. Right? Now the formula for wealth. Remember the formula. I told you this is the grand formula for wealth. Pastors don't teach it because most of them don't know it. They think that the reason why they are prosperous is because they are preaching the gospel. We established that that, that is an incomplete truth. It's a lie. No pastor is prospering just because he's preaching the gospel. It's not true. Any pastor that tells you that is simply because he doesn't know why he's prospering. It is not because you are a preacher that you are prospering. And at the same time, it's not because you are a preacher that you are poor. Let me use the opportunity and balance this. How many ladies have been praying that a man of God does not come close to them because men of God have been associated. The moment you say you are a poor person, 
they say, you went to school to read all of this just to be a pastor, as if it's a course. And people say, ah, may God that sent you go with you. And the lady who is going with you, I pray for you. You see, all those kinds of pity. What? <laughs> what gave us this wicked mindset? If you come and say, daddy, a pilot asked me, I'll say, are you joking? What did you tell him? Say, I'm thinking about it. Say, are you crazy? Go answer him and let's change our story. But the moment you say a pastor, say, ah, pastor. What did you tell him? I said, yes. I, so, we have, you see that is a mindset. And that mindset has made many pastors to try to be rich anyhow, to prove to the parents that when I married your daughter, it was Gary, you gave me your house, but come and see what God has done. You never get rich just because you are a preacher. You get rich because of what the formula that I taught you. And this is the formula. That the amount of money we receive, your wealth or your income, will always be in exact proportion to three things. Number one, the demand or the need for what you do, your ability to do it, and the difficulty in replacing you. This is the formula for wealth. Oh, beautiful. Okay, so it's there. The amount of money you receive, your wealth or your income will what? Always, don't forget, always be in exact proportion to the demand or the need for what you do. This is why pastors are rich. Because what they are teaching, there is a need for it. Are you seeing that? Your ability to do what you do is not just a demand for it alone that you have skill and proficiency enough to do it well and then number three the difficulty in replacing you the degree to which is difficult to find somebody like you doing the same thing brothers and sisters hear me this is the exact formula for wealth it will work for anybody any day anywhere it's a principle Unfortunately, preachers just tell you tithe and sow a seed and go and sit back and watch what God will do. Then favor will come, but because you do not understand, you will come and testify. Praise the Lord. I gave tithe or I dropped a seed in miracle service. And now somebody brought one million. The question is, will you remain a millionaire after three years? Two weeks after that testimony, you, your mind takes you where you were before you drop the seed. Say, I refuse to be poor. Shout it. I refuse to be poor. I make up my mind to be wealthy. See, what I'm going to show you tonight, if you remain poor after this series, you were not fair to yourself. I'm being very sincere with you. When I show you what you're about to learn tonight, see, let me tell you, brothers and sisters, don't trivialize what you are hearing now. People pay millions of naira. To hear half of what you are hearing i have a responsibility over us to make sure that we hear the truth i got a testimony that there's a pastor who is in oil and gas he's a living faith pastor and he stumbled across the wealthy place part two just the part two and i heard that when he listened to it he was looking for all his friends and business associates and giving them and say i've been a businessman and i have never had this this is somebody into oil and gas he said it changed his mind completely and now you are here seated and you're just nodding many of our parents if they had one tenth of what i'm telling you i promise you they would have been billionaires see this this thing is 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 so magical that no matter how dull it's not left to your personal intelligence at all this is, this is the thing that makes wealth a great blessing. If it was just a product of the Y, the X, intellect, some people would be disadvantaged. But it was designed in such a way that even the dullest who is obedient will be wealthy. It's God speaking to us. So the amount of money we receive will be in exact proportion to this. And we did a little personal evaluation. Take note of that. Let's go straight to the teaching of tonight. 
the wealthy place part three I'm on my way on my way on my way to better days I'm on my way on my way on my way to better days better days I'm on my way on my way Multiple streams of income, right? Tonight I want to teach you the law that is responsible for activating multiple streams of income. I pray you value it. I pray from the depth of my heart that you value it. I struggled with sharing what I'm about to share today because I was wondering. See, I hate it when personally because I treasure every information and I treasure every revelation that I bring out and um, the greatest reward that I can receive for this is not 1 million, it's not 10 million it's not to say come and take a car or take a house and that's, that's not my concern the greatest reward for this series is that we see people experiencing the financial rain in their lives. For me, this is the greatest consolation. No matter what you buy or sow into my life, it's as irrelevant as whatever. It will really grieve my heart if after this teaching your finances does not change. I don't know what to tell you again. Praise the Lord. Because this is the very secret of the world's greatest millionaires. Billionaires, all of them, every single one of them. If you have ever admired them, this is the key. I've reduced the work for you. All the tens and hundreds of books, seminars, videos, and all kinds of sacrifices has been compressed in a series for you to receive. If you don't act on it, there's no reason why you should blame God. Unfortunately, I know that not all of us will act on it. It's a sad truth. That's why Jesus told the disciples, he said, the poor you will always have with you. Meaning there are people, no matter what they hear, they will not change. And the trouble is those who don't change are the ones who will criticize us. They will get angry because they are not doing anything. And they'll say it's not true. What they've taught is not true. People, if I told you now, all of you, take off your shoes put your right finger there's something I'm going to bring out and shake many of you say my, my story will change because you like things that don't commit you you see why we like fetish things Africa for that matter they say turn around and slap something three times they go it's done the man leaves rejoicing because that spirit of laziness we hate it Whenever you tell people it's up to you, they say, no, do it for me. Just do it and give me the result. God will bless you. Unfortunately, life is not like that. We like a wolf. That a wolf mindset has done a lot. We like telling people, thank you. Just do it. And you say, really, just for me? Unfortunately, not everything in life is a gift. There are things that are rewards. They will commit you. This is one of them. That's why people like lottery. They like inheritance. It's one word that we love in Africa. Inheritance. He died and left it for me. <laughs> That's why we love that scripture. The wealth of the wicked. Ah, yeah, yeah. Notice I've not touched that scripture. The wealth of the wicked is laid for me. You will grow old. That scripture was written. Wait, hold on. That scripture was written before our forefathers were born is that true that scripture was even written before colonialism and those who quoted it died without touching the wealth my bible says god gives to a man that is good in his sight wisdom and knowledge and then he gives to the unbeliever 
to heap and to gather that he may give to the believer. We think that it's just because we are singing praises and tithing. Then Dangote will get up one day and say, um, Shahoma, there is an anointing on me. I don't know what is upon me. Please come. Um, this is my sugar company. It's your own. If that is your idea about the massive kingdom wealth transfer, be delivered now in the name of Jesus Christ. But what an illusion. You really believe the man will leave his PA, his sons and daughters, wives and concubines, and then just come to you because you think, listen, I know we keep talking a lot. We say in one day, the wealth of Egypt was given to Israel. You don't talk about 40 years when Moses was in the wilderness. You don't talk about Moses' compliance. You don't talk about his repeatedly going to Pharaoh. We see courage. We see audacity. We see character. We see discipline. Right? We see faith. We see patience. You leave all of that one and the only thing you see is that in one night, I've told you preparation takes time. It's manifestation that is instant. We talk about Joseph becoming the prime minister. We forget that a woman lied that he raped her. Do you know what it means to be scandalized on your road to destiny? We forget all that one and we just say in one day, Joseph came up. From the day he helped someone to the day of his reward was two years. The wine presser forgot about him, yet he was still faithful. He was not offended. We are the ones who have deceived you. Pastors, pastors are the ones who have deceived sincerely and innocently, but very wrongly. And we must admit it. I told you many pastors do not have financial literacy. Why? Because all we do is copy and paste. I go for a pastor's conference. I hear what a man of God I honor says. And you see, the fact that you are... Um, the wealth of ministers is, is, is a very special case in Nigeria because a man as a pastor may not have financial intelligence and yet be rich because of the way ministry is done. Are you getting the point? He is fulfilling the law although he does not know it, so he is rich. And he thinks the reason why he is rich is just because he is anointed. No, sir. This is the reason. So many people are under pressure. If I must be rich like my daddy or papa, I must be a pastor. Right? So there are so many people who are not called into the fivefold ministry, racing to make sure they start churches in a hope that if I have plenty members, imagine what it will translate to. Let me tell you something funny that someone told me. I think it was a year or two ago. We were somewhere and I paid for something and the person looked at me. He said, man of God, you are the people who enjoy ministry. See all the plenty crowd in Koinonia. You see, you see why he's poor? Because in his mind, he's saying, Abba, everybody, prophets of him, everybody gives you 10, 10,000 or 1, 1,000. You see that? On Koinonia database, there are about 6,500 people. Multiply that one times, even one, one. This is how poor people think. They just say, Kai, apostle, tell us the truth. You are enjoying. See? <laughs> if that's what you are thinking, how much have you given me? How much have you given me your personal seed? No, that's wrong. That's not how you think. That's not the reason why men of God are prosperous. Multiple streams of income. Let's go to the business of the night. Are you blessed? Yes. Genesis chapter 2. So, so Sosa kim cho Sosa kim chi E Sosa kim chi o Sing it one more time Sosa kim chi Verse 10. 
Genesis 2 verse 10. I want to show you a mystery. May God open your eyes tonight in the name of Jesus. Help us, media. It's possible. Genesis 2 verse 10. Only you are worthy. Everyone read. And a river went out of Eden to water the garden. And from thence it was parted and it became what? Four. Next verse. The name of the first was Pishon. That which is, that which compassed the whole land of Havilah. Where there is what? Stop. The Bible says, look at me. From Eden there was one river. And then it said the river parted itself into four streams. And it started telling us that every one of the streams had a particular treasure. In one of it, there was gold. And the Bible says the gold is good. It started listing precious metals and so on and so forth. Are you getting my point now? So, one river parting itself into four streams. A particular man of God said this and I believe so much. The secret to oceanic wealth is having multiple streams of income. A stream can dry, but an ocean never dries. Never dries. An ocean never dries. A little stream can dry, but an ocean will never dry. This from scripture becomes for us a revelation into constructively building a robust recession proof financial life multiple streams of income the greatest limitation with the nigerian economy and the nigerian citizens generally is the mindset that operates a single stream of income and that single stream of income is usually our job job that job mindset is one of the greatest financial stumbling block in my opinion that's what has stopped many people so an average young man in nigeria operating under the 6334 system you know completes his secondary education and then goes to the university to study for maybe four five six years or whatever and then may add a master's or whatever it is and the moment he graduates the first thing in his mind now please don't get me wrong just follow me i'm not against job but the first thing is his, in his mind is to be employed it's not his fault it's not her fault the system designed you that way are you getting me so the moment you finish the first question elderly people ask you is uh -uh, you are finished now you say yes say so where are you working not what are you producing not are you deploying your potentials where are you working so it trains you to serve it trains you to work now the trouble is this the average salary of a young graduate or even somebody that is working well in nigeria ranges within 50 to 100 000 is that fair enough that's about the amount right <laughs> no matter how careful you are with that money it cannot fund your vision. Are you getting the point now? A job was never designed to completely fund your assignment. Getting one stream of income or staying on one stream of income is the key to insufficiency and perpetual financial struggle. Please listen to me operating under one stream of income i don't care how successful that stream is is the key to insufficiency and perpetual financial struggle that's the reason why many people never have enough now you are working and they think the problem is that their paycheck is just hundred thousand then they now rise to a managerial level where they may be earning about 250 maybe 350 some people never even earn that much and then they find out that things do not change right because of parkinson's law that your need will rise to meet your level of income the meaning of that is you cannot be earning 300,000 and be eating at mama put 
Is that true? So, while you were earning 10,000 or 20,000 or 50,000, you can go to a place where you eat food for 70 naira. But you cannot be earning 300,000 and go and sit down eating the food for 70,000 naira. So, your need, your, your expenses will rise with your level of income. You were earning 50,000 and you were able to do something decent with it. And then you forgot that you are going to get married. You thought your wife was a toy. You don't know that she's a human being with a stomach to eat, a body to dress, and then you had the gods to get her pregnant. Here comes your twins. See that? Yet, hold on. Whether you call them children or adults, financially, they are three human beings. Are you getting me? Regardless of their level of consumption, they will still take something out from you. And then you have a dog. Oh, and then you have goats. You see, we, you don't know that all the, once it is a living entity, it must consume. You have been counting yourself alone. Are you getting the point now? Now the trouble is, there is nothing called job security. Job security is an illusion. You know what job security is? Job security means that you are working in a place where um, your, your stay can be fairly predictable. That you can build a financial life around it because you think that in the next 10 or 15 years you will still be there. In the Nigeria of today and in the 21st century, the concept of job security does not exist. Praise the Lord. Everybody say hallelujah. Say I got a federal government job. Which one? Civil defense. And you laugh to mean that for the next 20 years I will be there. You really think so? See that? So we find consolation. Oh, I'm working in a bank. And all of a sudden you get up one day and your director tells you, sorry, we are downsizing people. And uh, here's the list of those who must go. What did I do, sir? I said, no, no, no. You didn't do anything. We really appreciate you. In fact, your services are well needed. Can you leave? I remember somebody who got a job. I think he was with Etisalat or um, Airtel, one of these um, telecommunication companies. He was very happy. At the point he was preparing for his marriage, he prepared based on that budget. Then they now told them they are moving the office to Ibadan or something. And they told them they will share. You either follow them to Ibadan or they will give you 200000 and off you go. And he smiled and collected the 200,000. Because you see, when you are poor, you think 200,000 is a lot of money. Until you collect it and find out that the money to transport your in-laws or to transport yourself, you know, <laughs> will finish everything and then you find out that you are... I will never forget, a few days to his wedding, he refused to come to the place where the wedding will take place. I had to call him and say, where are you? said I'm so so pleased. I said leave that place right now and come. What is all that? Can't be, can't run away. Just come and trust God. Hmm. That's very true. Nothing in this world will satisfy. This is a part of the song I love. Jesus you're the cup that won't run dry. Every mundane, listen, the Babylonian system, this cosmos, the economy of the world was never designed to make you rich. It was designed to strangle you to death. That's why I like that song. He's the cup that will never run dry. Jesus, you're the cup that will Can you sing just that part one more time? Jesus, you're the cup. The wisdom of the word can open you up to a realm. It may not happen immediately, but as surely as the morning comes after the night, it can bring you into the place we call the wealthy place. There is such a place here and now. Hallelujah. So, the single income stream is one of the things that has destroyed a lot of people. Why do we need multiple streams of income? Number one, to ensure abundance at all seasons. To ensure abundance at all seasons. 
to ensure abundance at all seasons. Please let me have four people. I want to use them to just um, make an illustration. Three, four people. Let me. Thank you. Just stand here, guys. Watch this. Let's call these guys different streams. Just stand and face me. Thank you. Watch this. If this is the first and only stream of income you have, let's call this a job, right? We we'll identify what the others are shortly. But let's assume this is all you have, your job. Let's even call it a nice place, NMPC. That's where many of us dream of. Or Shell, or Chevron, or whatever it is you want to call it, right? Watch this. This is all you have. Number one, it was never designed to fund your project. And number two, your salary will only keep coming to the extent to which that corporation keeps functioning. It's one thing for you to be employed and it's another thing for your corporation to keep being relevant. If you were working in Nitel in the 90s, you would be happy because Nitel was invincible. I mean, they were the only telecommunication company. You would imagine that working in Nitel by now, you would have been the boss only for you to be fired and sent away because the demand right for as long as there was a demand for their product and their service they had money when there was no demand number two if you were working in night post post office right and you were working as the secretary using the typewriters whether electronic or manual doesn't matter right now we have emails i remember when we used to post letters in fact even with the young people have experienced some dramatic transitions remember when they used to use card you get a card and then you load it 200 500 and you slot it in one big something and you hold it you know and then you are trying to talk and then the card just finishes and it starts beeping only for you to go and buy another one imagine within the last 10 to 20 years the transition that has happened so for you to say job security in terms of working in an organization is a mirage the service that organization provides may be inelastic but then the question is what is the guarantee that they will still need your service how many people do we know seated here listening to me right now many who are following us online how many people do you know started working very well and they were happy they gave tight sincere people and now they've been laid off and they've remained there in their utter frustration five years have turned to ten years ten years has turned to fifteen years and many of us look around and we say daddy I grew up knowing you not to work and they say I've been waiting uh, even last week I submitted my CV and look at this he started that when you were five years. Now you are 25. For 20 years, he's hoping that one day somebody will need his service enough to give him a job. One stream. The beauty of multiple streams is this. Watch this. The, the limitation of one stream is covered up by another stream. Are you getting what I'm saying now? There is no stream of income that is perfect what you can do is to combine streams of income that complement one another so that the lapse of one is covered by the availability of another are, are you getting the point now this is part of the benefits for instance do you know that is one thing for you to get a job but it's another thing for you not to be paid there are workers in some states that have not been paid for how many months almost six months now you notice I'm sorry to say but most of the civil servants in Nigeria don't pay them for two to four months and they are dead completely dead are you seeing that those who have extra streams of income while they wait for the salary to be paid there's something to fall back on see they can laugh with you and say Kai times are hard but it's not true they are saying it because you will insult them if they say times are not hard they are identifying with that poverty mindset. So they say it's true, times are hard. But the truth is, they are, they are, they are, on heaven. They are in heaven. Heaven on earth. You see that? So you find out that this person is here. God forbid his car is stolen. 
His salary alone was designed to take care of the family. But because there is another stream, in two or three months, he has bought another car. For, so, for somebody who collected, he was loaned from the bank and he bought a car of 2.5 million. You have not finished paying the loan and they've stolen the car. You know you are finished. Whether you are to go for work or not, you must go. Because if not for anything, that loan must be paid. Out of the 2.5, you've paid only maybe 90,000 or 130,000. You know that you are, the journey is still far. You cannot afford to quit your job no matter how sick you are. So you see people angrily dragging themselves in the morning. That's why they vent the anger on you. They get up and look at you. One, two, three, four, five, six children. Now the seventh one has come. There is a loan of 9 million to pay in the bank. They now cut our salary from 200,000 to 150. And the man is saying, where is my life going? See, every man you have seen was not like that. Every man you have seen who is angry, beating his wife. I can tell you, if that's how he toasted the woman, she would have told him no. Something made them happy. Notice men from 50 years and above. That's why people don't even remember Father's Day. Because all we remember about fathers is they are cruel and wicked. It's not their fault. It's the inability to learn what I'm teaching you. And if you don't learn it, I guarantee you in the name of the Lord, you are on the way to becoming exactly like that. Absolutely. In fact, it will be harder. Because the 21st century, living in the 21st century right now, is a lot more difficult and complex. Right? Well, if you factor in terrorism, if you factor in wickedness by people, put in all these factors, humanly speaking, that living in the 21st century is living in a challenging time. Your advantage is in the fact that you have many streams. So you are an ocean receiving from many streams. If one stream dries up, there is another that can complement. While you're working on that one, then there is another. There is no millionaire I know except wicked and godless and corrupt and wicked people. Except those ones. But there is nobody who is a millionaire and a billionaire. And trust me, I've met a number of them in my life. None of them operates under one street. It's poor and average people, civil servants that operate on one stream of income. You calculate everything, what the father and the mother is getting. For some, it's not even up to 100,000. And yet, the school fees of one child is 75,000 or 50,000 or even 30,000. Why would the man not be angry? Do you know how many angry people are in Nigeria? Have you seen them lately? You stand outside tomorrow morning and just watch. Just get a chair and sit down and watch people angry. Somebody will be moving and just kick something. Oh, and he just... Stress. Don't laugh. Oh, I'm, I'm very serious about what I'm saying. You are laughing now because somebody is giving you money all the time. By the end of this year, they will tell you you have come of age. And uh, we, we have seen how God has helped you thus far. From now henceforth, you are on your own. That's when it will dawn on you. You will go back to your notes and start reading everything that I've said. I saw this happen to my father. I saw this happen in my very family. I saw this happen to many pastors, sincere people, very honest people. This has happened to many ministries. There are many beggarly ministries. This has led people into witchcraft. It has led people into corruption. Get the implication of this. It has led people into 419. It has led people into all kinds of things. Whenever they catch armed robbers or they catch prostitutes, look at our ladies. Many ladies have gone into prostitution. Do you know that I, I saw a shocking statistic that I think is it about 40% of the firstborn in many families are not the product of the husband and the wife. When we get to heaven, there's going to be a lot of confession. Very funny statistics. Multiple streams of income is the key to surviving financially in the 21st century. Activating multiple streams of income, hear me brothers and sisters, is the key 
to surviving the vicious tide the vicious tide of economic hardship because it will happen you have not seen recession yet more will come it's in your bible right talking about the heavens over people becoming like brass and their earth becoming like iron it will happen you can't stop it you can only exempt yourself i choose to exempt myself so i rather pay the price now and exempt myself hallelujah bless you guys thank you so the limitation of one stream is covered by the availability of another now watch this i want to teach you something about the benefit of multiple streams of income write two words down one cash flow please quickly let's save time we have to finish and um, what we have one cash flow number two write capital projects one cash flow two capital projects you are not listen you are not truly financially free if there is no structure around your life to deal with these things watch this cash flow talks of the money that keeps coming consistently to be able to meet your immediate needs and your expenditure is that true capital projects or the money the income for capital project talks about the resource the financial resources that you will need for all the capital projects you have building you know school fees of your children and and all of that savings and so on and so forth now watch this our parents were taught so much about long-term projects so they bought land right they have cattle they have goats they have a lot of things that can meet long-term projects but they did not make arrangements for cash flow so you can see a man that owns 10 houses but he cannot produce 10 naira to take his child to the hospital under emergency you will think the man is stingy because you that's how many of our parents many of us now think our parents are giving some other people money they may not necessarily be doing that they are just financially illiterate and they are suffering the consequence for it so they do not they didn't prepare for today they were focusing so much on tomorrow they forgot that it's until you are alive today that you can meet tomorrow are you getting that now so they forgot that there will be needs how many houses have you gone to that you know the people are rich and sincerely they cannot bring out 1000 naira to go and buy chicken somewhere and just come and prepare it because the man is broke he may say i don't have money you think he's joking but truly truly there is nothing that's a poor financial life yet he has land right yes he has resources who owns this container he's the person who owns this coca-cola depot he's the person but there's no provision for this now the trouble is in a bit to remedy that the younger generation our generation has focused entirely on cash flow to get money to always be in your pocket and we're forgotten about tomorrow you see the mistake so i need money now i want to buy the watch of twenty thousand now i want to buy the trouser now so you see somebody and say man this guy is rich the watch of twenty thousand shoe of fifteen or twenty thousand you are wearing a suit of this you calculate everything on him and he's standing he's wearing two hundred thousand and you are beguiled to think he's very rich still everything he's wearing and he becomes a beggar instantly because he's not preparing for tomorrow are you getting what i'm saying so financial literacy is the ability to keep that balance such that you can eat today you can live well today and then at the same time prepare for tomorrow there are many of our parents you will start enjoying their money when they are 80 years at eight years the project they started 20 years will now come to fruition but at that time they are too old they can't do anything they would die and leave it for uncles who will swear that they will charm you if you don't leave that money alone and you will quietly just leave are you seeing that now and then we the younger generation are so obsessed i'm amazed to see the way our generation is so obsessed about producing instant results watch people that graduate everybody wants to show i'm working i now bought a car a bmw 
and um, I don't I no longer use the road I now fly I fly I fly around I'm flying to this place I'm flying to that place and then you carry your phone and say this is this is iPhone iPhone what iPhone 6 have you seen the speed of the internet and so on and so forth and then we use this to lie to ourselves that it means we are rich that's why every rich man we look at every small boy just behaving and nod his head and say this guy is about to regret it unfortunately most of our sisters have been trained to identify those kind of people and define them as being rich so you come back and say is that brother that asked me and they say which one the poor one or the rich one and then you say the rich one meaning the one that held that phone the one that the, the watch or the shoes and all these were glittering you are you will be in big error because if you neglect today you will die today and never meet tomorrow and if you concentrate just on today you will enjoy today if you wear the cloth you should wear tomorrow today you walk naked tomorrow if you eat the food you should eat tomorrow today get set for hunger are you getting what I'm saying so my goal in the teaching tonight is to be able to help you structure your financial life such that you will be able to at least have something to live by and then prepare greatly for the future praise the Lord hallelujah thank you Jesus for wisdom the key to activating multiple streams of income write this down you do not activate the stream just by blindly starting up many businesses now I listen to business people a lot and I've had the privilege to be and speak in a few conferences but the problem here watch this for many people the danger huh, is that they just tell you go and start up a business aside from your job do something else that teaching is very sincere but misleading if you have received that teaching I want you to throw it away now and listen to what I'm about to teach you because for many people that's that's the circumference of your business seminar are you getting blessed so they've told you together with the job start something anything just start no sir you will start and fail and fail woefully write this down God's system for activating your streams of income I want to teach you the kingdom system there is a Babylonian system of establishing multiple streams of income that ends you in frustration ends you in penury or you will be rich but at the expense of your salvation you will be rich but at the expense of very important things in your life everything that we do we must do it from the perspective of the kingdom and this is where men of God must balance I believe in in reaching out to business and getting a lot of business people and their ideas but please hear me you must be careful not everything taught in the business world should just be lifted and brought to church hook line and sinker many men of God go for a lot of secular business meetings and they teach them a lot of things and they are motivated I've, I've listened to all those people to trust me but you must sustain a kingdom paradigm to be able to edit out the things that are not consistent with the way of the Lord because anything that is not founded on the truth of God's word I don't care what it is it will not last or even if it produces result for you it will take something else out of your life it is the blessing of the Lord that make it rich and will not add sorrow to it say amen so what is God's system for activating the streams of income? Let's hurry up. Proverbs 13, 18 verse 16 quickly it's a popular scripture we always talk about but from here we'll rush so that we'll finish on time what I'm about to bring before you is a powerful revelation that will change your life Proverbs 18 verse 16 let's read on it says a man's gift please listen please pay attention a man's 
gift does what? Does two things. What's number one? It makes room for him. Is that true? What's number two? It brings him before a man's gift does two things for him. It gives him opportunity and it gives him access. Write it down. Your gift does two things for you that is very vital in producing finances in your life. It gives you opportunities and then it gives you access. Access. Entrance before the great. A man's gift So how do you identify the streams of income in your life? Many people have been taught. They, so they teach you different businesses. And they tell you just do this, this. No, 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 no. no. There's no guarantee that because they gave you a good business idea, you will succeed. You see the mistake. This is where we mess up and we mislead people a lot. Write this down. You identify the streams in your life by looking at two things. Number one, your gifts and abilities. Your gifts and abilities are pointers to the kinds of streams that God has granted you access to. Your gifts and your abilities. Write it down. Number two, the problems and the opportunities that are in line with your passion. The problems and the opportunities that are in line with your passion. These are the two scriptural ways of identifying the streams that God puts in your life. One, your gifts and your abilities. Two, the problems and the opportunities that are in line with your passion. Not just any problem. You know they tell people, search for problems. There are problems all around Nigeria. You go and try a problem that you don't have passion for. And that's when you know that problems are not things you just solve overnight. It must be in line with your passion. Passion is the key that sustains you in a place. It is passion that puts you back up when you fail. Anytime you commit yourself to anything you are not passionate about, you waste your time, you waste energy, you waste resources. Is God helping us? Write this down. Every gift and ability you have is a potential stream of income. How true? Every gift and ability in your life is a potential stream of income. Every gift and every ability you have is a potential stream. Look at David for instance. Almost every gift the Bible identifies in David later became a stream for him. His ability to play, right? His ability to be faithful in service. His leadership skill. Everything was utilized in his life. I'm about to make a statement that is very striking. Maybe controversial. Especially for pastors. I want you to listen to me. Do not let men box you into one stream. And stop you from exploring other streams. Don't get into that illusion. Of making people box you because they identify and they know you as functioning in one stream if you are not careful people can put you in a box they know you as a pastor and you remain a pastor and die a pastor there are other streams crying for expression but the religious environment keeps people down and keeps people poor there's a lot that I want to say here how many times have many pastors with great entrepreneurial potentials, with great leadership potentials, there are other streams of income that can find expression, but they are boxed to the pulpit and left there. Why? Because people say you are a pastor. And the meaning of that is remain there, be poor there, and die there. This kind of mentality does not longer exist in the 21st century. You cannot live in the 21st century with this mindset again or i am a civil servant so when you call people you say those who are civil servants this side 
and you see a mass of people like bees coming to this side those who are businessmen this side that thing is about to change in the 21st century that concept of choosing whether you are a civil servant or choosing whether you are an entrepreneur are you getting my point there must be a weaving of it to survive the vicious financial circle in the 21st century are you getting blessed is God helping you there are many pastors I say this with a particular bias for pastors because we have said pastors are wicked people because pastors have been caught in all kinds of financial scandals in church eating God's money pastors have been found manipulating people and doing all sorts of things and the reason is because they have to respond to the necessary frustration that comes by having a single stream of income now the man is a pastor and is earning 20,000 with five children right you can imagine what that is that you give a pastor a house and one car does not mean he will not need money again and they themselves have not been educated they have not been taught they lack financial literacy are you getting the point now so the pastor has to necessarily keep preaching messages that will manipulate people into because he, the pastor's children must go to school is that not true the pastor must also eat some of you after the service you go to the pastor's house 10 people immediately after after service and all of them deserve to be fed this has brought a lot of problems for people especially those in ministry listen to me every potential you have that god put in you is crying for expression and you should never go back to the lord without giving it expression every gift in you I plan in my life that every gifting and every potential his majesty has deposited in my life will be adequately deployed praise the Lord there are so many things that's why many pastors are poor that's why they are broke one of my greatest mentors dr. Miles Munro a man who was able to cut across both the secular and the contemporary society utilized his potentials as a pastor he was the senior pastor and the founder of Bahamas Faith Ministry International and yet at the same time brothers and sisters he was a consultant for 16 presidents how many a consultant an advisor to 16 presidents at the same time he was so notable the Bahamian nation had to make him an ambassador imagine that and then at the, at the same time he owned an aircraft company not aircraft they are busy shouting that people are buying jet many of you may not know let me explain it to you what it means it, he he not own one aircraft boeing 737 no 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 he owned a fleet of aircraft the very company that deals in it and yet he was a kingdom man he lived well on earth and is gloriously honored in heaven that's why he was a man of integrity he was not just a man of integrity because he's the, there was absolutely no need why will you steal church money for what how much is the money are you getting the point i tell you the truth not exposing people to the different giftings in their lives to deploy it and then leaving them say it's like you are hungry you fasted for three days and then they make hot food nice food rise up and steaming right and then one drink is in front of you and they say just keep your nose and be staring at it but don't touch it that's the same frustration that happens to a pastor that you live with millions in a church account and he's sitting down and his son he cannot pay thirty thousand. they must be thieves necessarily with time even if their conviction at you see that don't trivialize what i'm sharing with you that's the reason why many, many pastors cannot be bold in teaching the truth because they have inconvenienced too many people and God is helping us tonight say after me in the name of Jesus I am gifted shout it in the name of Jesus there is a gift upon my life there are graces upon my life there are abilities upon my life and I will deploy every one of them to become a stream of income. 
even if God tells me to drop ministry today I will never be poor for the rest of my life because there are other streams are you getting me before God called me I was doing something is that not true you see many of us act as if oh God found people lazy go and read your Bible everybody God called into ministry he called from he called them from a standpoint of diligently doing something Moses was standing his father in lost sheep is that true every single one Peter they were all fishermen God does not call lazy people please don't make it look like being in ministry is a license unto laziness there are too many things I can do with my life to bring me stream of income if I'm not a preacher at least I can speak right there are so many things there are books to write I have different thoughts on different areas I can document my persuasions there are all kinds of financial and business vehicles to set up so don't you see a man of God rich and just think it's church money or just think and think are people not dashing their money you see articles blackmailing men of God all around and saying a man who was poor but now he has, as though he's not supposed to be blessed people are arguing and complaining about one jet two jets my goodness I don't know what will happen by the time we we'll come if we need hundred jets we will buy all of them I guarantee you very unapologetically see that you can be rich through the dignity of kingdom integrity it doesn't have to be by crooks it doesn't have to be by pranks and you don't have to be angry at wealthy people they look like you you're of equal age but your mindsets are not the same your sacrifices are not the same your courage is not at the same level hallelujah never allow anybody keep you in one position and not allow you to deploy your talents there are many of us who are seated here bishop td jakes the, the pastor of Potter's house, right? He wrote one book, Woman Thou Art Loose. Just one book. And that book brought him $4 million. Multiply that by 210 Naira there about. That gives you the equivalent in Naira because he deployed his writing potentials. It became an added stream of income. When people were insulting him for living in a house of 2.1 million, I said, come on, give the man a break. He didn't steal anybody's money. Why will I be worth 10 million, 20 million, 100 million and not live in a house? How much is 1.2? How much is 2 or 3 million compared to 100 million? Don't insult people. If a man buys a car of 20 million, don't insult him and say he's extravagant. Compared to what? You are gauging his success based on your level. Compared to what? You see that? These are some of the poisonous mindsets that have destroyed us. We never forget, we forget the fact that these guys are sick. Their tape ministry, the books that they have written enough will feed them for a lifetime. Just the books. Bishop Oyedeko, for instance, I hear that he does not even collect one naira from his books. And there are at least 60 books he has written. How many of them are bestsellers? Yet we, we, have, we are the first to criticize people and run down men of God and run down people because how much is the peanuts you get from congregations compared to the wisdom. See, the Bible says, if any man lack wisdom, let him ask, not let him criticize those who are walking in it. Hallelujah. ministry for me alone with all the blessings of ministry is only one stream of income there are so many of them in my life that have been developed and others are still being developed i will never be poor it's not about being a preacher it's about realizing that once there is a demand for what i do and i train myself in the ability to see to do it when you are sleeping the wealthy people are awake 
studying seminars, doing a lot of things, right? And then we see them rich and we criticize them. Please, I want to say this koinonia from today. Never develop the attitude of criticizing wealthy people again. You will never be like what you resent. Anything you drive away from your life, you can never be like it. Honor is the seed for access. Hallelujah. I'm friends to many, by the grace of God, many wealthy people and many millionaires. I'm not so daft to be around people who are blessed and not ask questions. See that? This is very important. But then let me, let me quickly balance something because there are so many people who will be hearing. Now, I explained to us that there are all kinds of streams of income. Watch this. The trouble I have, especially with men of God, in business and other things, is that they do not know how to draw the line between the different fragments and facets of their lives. Are you seeing that now? When Jesus entered the temple, what did he do? He took a whip and he was flogging those who were doing business in the church. In the church. Jesus showed us that there is a difference. As a man of God, I have my corporate life. I have other dimensions, leadership and all of that. You see that? I cannot come into church and be doing business in the church. No, no, a thousand times no. The moment I do that, I'm taking advantage of the loyalty. Are you getting that? Of the people and using it for my... That's why you never come and hear me talk business in church. No, sir. The Bible says, give to Caesar what belongs to Caesar. Right? I cannot bring up a product right now and force everybody in Koinonia to buy it. It is my product, but a lot of men of God are doing it. This is where the balance must come in. You cannot use the vast people that God has given you to train and build and then squeeze into them. No, no. There is a difference between different aspects of your life that's the reason why god fragmented himself into different aspects you cannot know rafa by studying gyra gyra is a dimension itself rafa is a dimension itself sikenu is a dimension itself is that true el shaddai is a dimension itself but all of those names belong to one person i am so he said who do men say that i am and they were calling different dimensions of him as a, as a man of God, you are dimensional. While it is true that you do not stay on one place, you must know where the boundary lies. Never carry business into church and go and manipulate people. No, it's wrong. Very wrong. If you are here as a man of God and you are doing it, stop. Stop. You must give people an opportunity to make their decisions. They are not daft. Of course, I understand sometimes because of our kindness and generosity. Do you know why I'm telling you this? Because there are some things I may not be able to share here. But see, the business world is a lot different from ministry. In the business world, you must give people room to take responsibility for themselves. As a man of God, you can ruin your church in one moment. Right? I know there was a situation that happened in, in one church down in Abuja. It's, it's one of the popular churches around where there were some people who brought some land to sell and then they brought it to church and they designed one scheme and members were happy and all of that and then somehow the people were dishonest and they swindled the people with the church the man almost lost his ministry because people started saying our pastor is a thief he connived with people to eat our money do not think because members sit down and love you they love you as a man of God but you must give them room to build their financial capacities. Don't over pamper people in the name of kindness. They will stab you when they fail because the business world is a world that requires its own maturity. Are you getting me? Many people do not have business sense and you expose them in the name of church to businesses or some things. When things go wrong or it fails, they will kill you. They will write articles about you. They will lock you up as a man of God. And so let people take their responsibilities by themselves. Are you getting what I'm saying? Is God giving us wisdom? 
this is a mistake a lot of pastors have made they come to church anybody just comes in and says I'm a lawyer I have some land I am a this I have that and then the pastor comes and announces and because people love the pastor they now run around and come and say this is our pastor this and that and that or they raise money to buy church land you know, all kinds of things please I'm telling us especially for men of God who are here who are upcoming maintain integrity maintain integrity as a man of God define the jurisdiction of your work to the ministry and stay there now there are other platforms you can create like Sunday Adelaja who created a lot of business platforms if you want to do anything that is business in the church set up a committee or a club and let people subscribe to it spell the terms of it and let the people know that they are venturing into this not in the name of the church but at their own risk that way whatever happens the integrity of the church is preserved is God teaching us I told you I struggle to teach you what I'm teaching you because this is what you would teach in a business class that you pay hundreds of thousands but this is giving us wisdom especially for those of us who are leaders don't carry the zeal of business ideas or whatever and come and project on people that they are praying in tongues and they hug you you don't yet know their attitude towards money they will stab you and kill you is God helping us let's continue so your streams of income should be around your giftings should be around your abilities your streams of income now look up I want to teach you something please very important now write this word down time t-i-m-e write this word down time your life on earth is measured in time don't forget this your life on earth is measured in time that means whatever you give your time to you have given part of your life to the time you are giving your employer or your job your office is part of your life you are giving to them write this down focus on activating streams that increase your income without eating up your time focus there is only limited time you have everybody has only 24 hours you cannot have 25 hours in a day so if you generate streams of income around your life and all of them require your time and your active participation you will wear your life out and you will be ineffective wealthy people focus on activating streams that increase their income without necessarily eating up their time let me give you an instance if I write a book right now if I write one book right I communicate my thoughts maybe books on there's so many books that I have I'm just waiting for the Lord to release me to begin to write books I know many of them will be bestsellers because I will not just get up and write books I will humble myself and meet those who have produced bestsellers and ask them I have the content but what of the marketing what of the publicity never do a thing until you have consulted with the best of the best you will minimize mistakes you will make instant progress so I can write a book right now for instance and then release it and I can be here preaching and somebody is buying my book in a bookstore doesn't know me has never seen me may never see me right and then income is coming into me millions and millions of income coming because I'm documenting my persuasions and there are many areas I can write on I can write on the anointing I can write on wealth and prosperity I can write on leadership all the areas that I know God has granted me grace in I'm just showing you how one stream now I can be here and be effective in koinonia another thing for instance if I build an estate you see that if I build an estate there are people renting I don't even know them I've never seen them for instance but I'm here teaching the word my time is being invested to the principal thing I've been called to do 
but there are channels that are bringing me in. Are you getting what I'm saying now? Very important. If I teach, assuming that we're selling our teachings, imagine the hundreds of millions we would have made by now on just the media ministry. But God instructed us not to do that. The impact is more important than the money. One grateful person can bring what we would have gotten in 10 years and bring in one day. This is the benefit. Every time you dispense value, you must be rewarded. Whether you sell it or you give it free. It's a law. So we are not at a loss at all. Now imagine that today's message, the media department will now package it, the wealthy place, volume 1, volume 2, volume 3, right? And then maybe each of them is sold now. You can imagine that. And all of that is happening. So people are buying it somewhere, whereas you are still here. As much as possible, value your time. Your time is premium. You must know that. You cannot give away your time unnecessarily for everything. It's too much to give your life just for money. No. Let wisdom minimize the dispensing of your time so that you will spend that time on the things that matter in life. I hate seeing people spending all their time chasing after money. You should chase after God. Chase after God. Seek ye first the kingdom and seek ye to align yourself to the principles of the kingdom. That's what is meant by his righteousness here. And he said all other things will be added. Let's hurry up. When you give your time, you give your life. Never forget that. The reason why they pay you salary is because you are exchanging two things for that salary. Number one, you are exchanging your gift or your potential or your, your skill. Number two, you are exchanging your time. These are the two things that go for your salary. You cannot afford to do this for the rest of your life. Because you are 24 hours. If you spend one third or two third of that 24 hours investing in somebody's project and his assignment, how much do you have left for yourself and for the advancement of the kingdom? Imagine that I cannot come for Koinonia now. And say because I'm trying to do something there. I'm looking for money somewhere. It's terrible. I'm failing in my assignment. It doesn't matter how much money I make. So you have to be careful. So that you don't just. That's the language of those we call hustlers. Hustlers are those who are ready to commit their time to anything that will give them money. Right? They have, their time is valueless to them. So they can give it away just for anything. My time is precious to me. Because my life is measured in time. God gives me the gift of 24 hours every day and I focus on doing the things that are consistent with my vision and my assignment. And while it is true that I want to activate streams of income, it will not be at the detriment of my assignment. And so you must structure your life in such a manner that you can activate multiple streams of income and then at the same time conserve your time as much as possible. Praise the Lord. Write this down. There is a, an equation for financial freedom. Financial freedom is equal to financial abundance plus time plus peace of mind. That you have money does not mean you are financially free. Financial freedom is equal to financial abundance, the availability of the resources plus time. There are people who have money but no time. No time to pray. No time to build. No time to spend a quality time with their children and their loved ones and their families. No time at all. They tell you no time. I'm busy. I'm busy. I'm busy. They started doing that when they were 20. Now they are 55. I'm busy. I'm busy. And then they die. Because on the seventh day, God rested. You, you are in the ninth day. You have not rested. You will die. Hallelujah. Let me tell you the reason why it's so easy to be rich in the 21st century. In the school of prosperity, especially in the 21st century, almost any and everything has a demand. There is a demand for almost any and everything. This is the reason why there should be no one here seated under the sound of my voice that in the next three years, in the next five years, should be poor. Impossible. There is a demand for just any and everything. The world is a global village. There is a demand for just anything. 
See? Right now, even people's laugh has brought them millions. Somebody just laughs. Is it not your ringtone? Oh, yes. Somebody just laughs around and does everything. That's side A. Does another one. That's side B. You see that? And you put it as your ringtone. And you go and download it. And you do a lot of things. Anything at all. Anything. A lady, because she has nice fingers, will make millions. Because she will market the ring of a jewelry company. They just keep putting rings on her hand. For every ring, $100,000. Can you imagine? Just for having a nice finger. There is a demand for anything. So you have been playing with that, your hand. Could it be that that's the rod of God? Just for being fine. You can wipe poverty away from your life forever. Right? Just for being not fine. You can still wipe poverty away from your life because you can be used in both ways. It depends on the message that is being communicated. Um, I'm just I'm speaking generally. There is a demand for everything, absolutely everything. No matter how little the skill is, there is a demand for it. Look at how pastors you may sit down and think that there are already too many pastors. Allow the glory of God to come upon your life. And see how many people will scrounge, scrounge after that. From today till Wednesday, non-stop, I have ministrations every day. I have a meeting morning and evening. You will think there are already enough pastors. No, no. There are 7.2 billion people. Right? You think there are an, enough people selling pure water or whatever. It's because you do not know how many people are on earth. When you know there is a demand for anything. And I told you the formula. Once there is a demand, there is money for it. You go and meet somebody and say, borrow me 10 naira. He'll tell you, I cannot. But sell something, he will pay you for it. In the 21st century, brothers and sisters, you are only limited by your creativity. You are only limited by your creativity. There is a mighty financial army that will rise. Even if you don't pay attention to this, I know that there are millions of people who will take this message and will run with it. There's an army rising up. There's an army rising up. There's an army rising up. They will break every chain, break every chain, break every chain, break every chain, break every chain. Write one word down. We're almost done. Creativity. Please write it. This is an important key in the school of prosperity. Creativity. What does it mean to be creative? Creativity is the ability to birth new or improved ideas. Oh, this is key to your life. The ability to birth new or improved ideas. If you lack this one ability, you will never be rich. Because that's the key to being different. That's the key to being unique. It's not just what you do. It's the uniqueness in it. And the key to being unique is hidden in one word. Creativity. The first revelation of God in the Bible was not as a savior. It was as a creator. And he created us in that image. Creativity. What we were born to do. Anyone who has a mind has the capacity to be creative. Your destiny is at the mercy of your creativity. This gentleman can produce this. 30 minutes of deep, intense worship just with instruments. And he will pray and fast and train himself and just package something like this. He can call it anything. The dew of heaven, part one. Millions of these copies will be sold because people will put it in their phones. 
can have a contract with most of the the, 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 the people iPhones and, and iTunes and all of these people and they can put it they can even put it by default in many gadgets and it's blessing people millions of people are buying it and this guy is getting blessed because there is a demand for everything that's why Don Wen will never be poor I know you gave your life to Christ at his song but he became rich because you bought the thing yes he never sleeps he never slumbers but you bought it or at least it was given to you there's an army rising up there's an army rising up there's an army rising up they will break every chain Break every chain. Break every chain. Break every chain. Break every chain. Creativity is the key to effectively creating a demand for your gifts or your potentials. The reason why nobody has placed a demand on your gift is because you have not added creativity to it. The reason why your shop looks like that of every other person is because you are not creative about it. Let me tell you, in the world of prosperity, you lose by becoming like every other person. Your uniqueness is what stands you out. Your competitive advantage. There is what you get in Koinonia that you will never get anywhere. It cannot be cloned. There is what you get from my life that you cannot get anywhere. There is what I should get from your life that I cannot get anywhere. This is your key to prosperity. Men will never come to you if there is an alternative to you. They will come to you to the degree to which you are uncommon and unique. I hear the chains of it falling. I hear the chains falling. I will give you four streams of income that can help you. That's, that's all we'll touch for this. Um, there are at least eight. I call them recession-proof streams of income. They are all in the Bible. But I'll give only four here. School of Ministry students will add two more. And then that's about it. Any other one has to be in a business or a corporate platform. Ready? Ecclesiastes chapter 11 verse 2 if we can get NIV please give us NIV quickly I hear the chains can we get NIV okay fine Ecclesiastes chapter 11 verse 2 please let's save time will you break every chain break every chain it says, give portions to seven, yea, to eight, for you do not know what disaster may come upon the land. Right? What other version do I have? It says, it says, I, I can't remember the version now, not, not amplified. It says, invest in seven places, yea, in eight. Um, what was that version? I don't know. One of these new versions. For you do not know what disaster may come upon the land. In other words, scatter your streams. Right? That concept of lay your egg in one basket is nonsense. Throw away that theology. Poor people said that. That's why they are poor. When the basket falls, what do you do? You die with it there. Listen. Thank you. God bless you. NLT. It says, but divide your investments among many places. For you do not know what risks might light ahead. I hear the chains. I love the Bible. Hey, yeah. mm. Number one. Land. Land. Everybody write it down. Land. 
open bracket land and anything you can get under it on it and above it it's all called land you know it as real estate land together with anything under it on it and above it look at me you are not rich if you do not own land are you hearing what i'm saying write it so that you don't forget i don't care what else you are you are poor if you do not own land because land is a fixed asset it cannot be stolen even if a bomb falls on that land, it can only affect what is on it. You will not see a big hole suddenly looking at you. Land is one of the greatest communications of God's justice and mercy upon the inhabitants of the earth. I'll stop there. Land. Two. Education. I'm giving you four fail-proof streams of income. Under education, write the following. Anything, whether speaking, writing, or setting up structures that transfer knowledge. Education is all about imparting knowledge. The Bible gives us a clue into becoming rich. It said before the coming of Christ, knowledge shall increase. There will be an unsearchable demand for knowledge. That means anything you do that will transfer knowledge to people, is a guaranteed source of wealth. There's nothing to hide. There's no secret about it. There's no secret there in the first place. Education. Speaking. How many people rake in millions of dollars every week just because they are able to communicate. They are not just talking. They are transferring knowledge. Imagine that this was a business meeting and everybody is paying 100,000 for the seminar. Calculate how many people. 100,000 times all the people we have, including all those who are online. And I'm doing the same thing. I don't need to talk louder. I don't need to shout more. The exact same thing. 10 years after I have preached this, or I've said this, or I've delivered this lecture, I will still be getting paid for it education one of the cheapest aspect of education is writing the ability to document your persuasion for as long as you think there is something you want the world to hear you can document it the only problem is what many people call book writing is nonsense they are just hungry people looking for money so there is no excellence and no creativity and at the end of it only 100 copies are sold and the bookstore tells you please get out but there is a key purpose driven life right rick warren that one book brought tens and hundreds of millions of dollars it was so profound they had to create a workbook for it love and respect there are many books that have become bestsellers rediscovering the kingdom because individuals documented strong persuasions that rattled the ideologies of continents could there be a persuasion in your life right now that you need to birth and bring out you are sitting upon a gold mine and yet you are crying crying for food and crying for water the only limitation to your life should be the voice of God not lack of creativity it's God speaking to us. Education. Number three. Your job. Your job. Paid employment. It's a stream of income. So your job is not bad. You can get a job. At least you receive salary from it. And the beautiful part of that is that your salary can solve your short-term needs. Because you know every month a fixed income is coming. So it can give you room to focus on other things that will take time to build. How many have I given? Uh, let's stop at the last one. Transportation. The only reason why oil and gas is useful 
is because there are human beings that need to move around. We love oil and gas, but we hate transportation. How unwise. I know that the resources are also used for a lot of things. But did you know that for as long as there are human beings on earth, there must be movement? You studied something that was a clue to your prosperity, but you forgot. Remember what we, I think it was in biology, social studies, Mr. Niger. Huh? Biology, Mr. Niger. Movement as part of the quality of living things. Is that not true? That was the key to your wealth that you have been neglecting. Every day, immediately after Koinonia now, listen, every week, I don't know how, okay, I have an idea. You cannot imagine how much is given to the transport companies that transport people without fail every week. Is that not true? Transportation. If they were your bosses, it would have been your money. Are you getting what I'm saying? How many people have had 300,000, 400,000 and then they used it to buy two phones? Foolish person. Whereas the phone is not bringing you anything. There are sometimes in that big phone only 300 naira will be there. And you can't make any call. You cannot even browse. Whereas you would have been able to buy even if it was a small golf. These are the kinds of businesses that you don't even need to know how to drive. right the the, the 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 driver that carries me around he started driving me three years ago and within that three years he has bought two extra cars two extra cars and i tell you a large percentage of that was for my money think about that they are always happy they you never see them frowning they are smiling because every time he sees me he sees his destiny and for as long as I need his services, I will keep paying for it. How many of you are sitting on millions, hundreds of thousands, roaming around, whereas, or trying to get rooms and apartments to prove a point that does not have to be proved? You want to show people, now you live in a three-bedroom flat that is empty, with one small mattress in one of the rooms, and people think you are a big boy. You are not big, you are small. Whereas something would have been bringing you income. Let me tell you something. The transport sector is a mysterious sector people have never studied. It's a sector that starts bringing you money instantly. From the first day the car goes out, by evening money is coming. 5 a.m. in the morning, brothers and sisters, there are people who get up begging. Whether it is town service, whether it is wherever. I know someone who bought Kekenapem, right? He just bought one, I think second year or something like that. And then when he bought that Kekenapem, I think about 12,000 12, comes in every week. 12,000. He just went and registered it with the association, National Union, those their union. And then he's around praising the Lord and giving tithe every week. And you are saying, this guy is he a thief? Or, no, 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 no. Do you have to be smart to do that? Necessary. You just have to be poor. And that's why I told you, there is no reason, brothers and sisters, for people to be poor. What's wrong with five people coming together? You all have 50, 50,000. Have a very well-defined term. You don't need to wait till you have one million. What's wrong with three or four people coming together? All of them having 100,000. And you buy a golf. In four, five months, you are broken even. And you can buy another one. And then buy another one. While that is happening, you are busy increasing your financial intelligence. How much have you spent from January to this year to, to now? Some of you millions. Look at how many of our parents are sitting down and getting angry at people. How many times did they pay them arrears of millions? What did they do with it? They went to a club and called friends and blew the money. They blew one golf away in one night to prove that their arrears has arrived. And yet we keep blaming God. But tonight God is giving somebody intelligence. You don't need to register any company. You don't need to know anybody. With an average car or an average golf, at least 3,000 is coming for you every day. This is the minimum. In seven days, it's 21,000 for doing nothing. You don't need to go to school. You don't need to know anybody. But there are many people sitting on you. And when you see blessed people, you think they are arrogant. They are not. They are not. 
the income that comes to your hand is in direct proportion to the demand demand the transport sector there are many people dreaming i will go into oil and gas i will go into oil and gas how much do you know it takes to start oil and gas you want to be a thief can't you start gradually how many people are sitting on five million ten million that are waiting to buy oil blocks of billions You have eaten your own prosperity by yourself. How many people have started popcorn? Popcorn inside ABU. Is that not true? Popcorn. I will never forget years ago when one of, I think that was in 2006 or 7, I wanted to start one popcorn machine, popcorn business in New Bamadi, and I wanted somebody to manage for me. So I needed to, I sent him to go and do a research for me on everything. I was surprised when the the owner of the popcorn said he makes 5,000 naira every day. Every day. You are eating, you bought it 30 naira. But many just like you are paying for it. And he said during orientation and uh, uh, what do we call it? Graduation matric. It can skyrocket to as much as 15,000, 20,000. There is no single ice cream machine in Zaria. Not that all those ones that uh, they, they put the thing as if it's tough. I'm talking of real, a standard Look at this. There are many of you sitting down. What's wrong with 10 people who come in with creativity? About 250,000 will buy that thing and go and open up something. I guarantee you, in one month, you will make your money back. That's how desperate it is. Um, I like ice cream like what? There's a place in Abuja. Every time they see me, they're happy because they, my money will finish there. I can't make it, so I must pay for it. Whatever you cannot do for yourself, be sure to pay for it. If you ever get it free, someone paid for it. Who is God speaking to tonight? I'm showing you streams. I'm a student. I'm young. Very soon you'll find out that the difference between you and graduation is one exam. Just one. And you come out and say, it's a lie. Maybe you say, get out of here. You are finished. Go, 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 go. Why should you be poor? When there is such a demand, a de there are, look, let me tell you something. If you have 20, 20 of any of the things I mentioned, there will still not be enough demand. How many saloons are in Italy? There are about 40,000 students. 40,000 students or more. And about 60% of those people are ladies. Count the number of saloons you have in your campus. Are they up to 10? I doubt if they are up to 10 servicing at least 10 or 20,000 people if you have 1,000 more of those things it will still not be enough and yet we criticize those who are producing because we have been we have been wired to consume that's all we do those who produce are the ones who are working. many of us are, are going into food question if we don't buy the food, why don't you get into businesses that do not need refrigeration and all of these things? I, I don't know about you, but I don't like things that give me heart attack. You see that? That's why I hate businesses that have to do with many people. One person's fight with his wife will affect my diligence. I don't like that. I like to be responsible. <laughs> I like to be responsible for my, my diligence or otherwise. I can't let another person's carelessness cancel everything I've done. No, if I do well, let me be commended. If I do bad, that's why all those kind of things, shipping vegetable from here to Port Harcourt, I will get into those kind of things. You can do that, but no way. So if the man is drunk on the way, I suffer because of his drunkenness. I don't like those kinds of business. This is me personally. You have been sitting on a gold mine, wishing that things will change. But God is speaking to you. Especially for those of us who are working. You are earning your 50, 50,000. Why don't you close your eyes and be determined that for the next six months you are going to save. Let me tell you something. Write it down. Never borrow money as much as possible. Or don't borrow money as much as, much as possible. This is a difficult thing, I know. I'm human, trust me. It's a very difficult thing. But I want you to make a vow today with your life 
that as much as God grants you the grace, you will never borrow money. The borrower is slave to the lender. Say it after me. Borrowing will put you in slavery forever. You can be addicted to borrowing. Borrowing is like drugs. Because it comes easy. When you borrow five naira, you will borrow 100,000. You will borrow five million until you find out that you are in debt of 500 million and you cannot know where it came from because of borrowing. A borrower. Some of you, as you are sitting down right now, not just from anything, maybe business failure or whatever, your own personal debt that you have eaten, everything you are wearing and the room you are staying off came, you borrowed money for it. You are smiling, but there is a pile of debt that is growing and you are borrowing to keep servicing it. You will be a slave forever. It is one of the Babylonian system. That's why you notice I never talked about borrowing. I'm sorry, I know that this insults a lot of your business book, but I don't believe it. In business, we teach that there's good debt and there's bad debt. You use good debt as a leverage. You use bad debt for consumption. No debt is the kingdom's way. No debt. Say it. Shout it again. After hearing all that I've told you today, you can choose to be emotional about what I've said and get up and return back like someone returning back to his vomit. Or you can make up your mind and say, this is it. I've come to the end of myself. Lord, I'm ready to begin to take decisions. Listen, the key to producing anything in life is to adjust. The most predictable thing in life is change. Change is the most predictable thing. Whether you participate in it or not, it must happen. There are two kinds of people. There are victims of change and there are initiators of change. Whether or not you want things to change, it must change. Listen, a time will come, all your friends will rise and leave you if you don't change. You will either be a victim of the change or a benefactor and an initiator. In Nigeria, many people are the recipients of change. The wealthy people are the initiators of it. I choose to be in that category. I refuse to just be a benefactor of change or just a, a, a victim. Whatever happens, I write it. No, sir. We are going to pray. Rise up on your feet. Psalm 66, please. Psalm 66, verse 12. Psalm 66, verse 12. Media, can you help us, please? Psalm 66. Please, everybody, rise. This is a very serious moment right now. It's a defining moment for many of us. Everyone read. One to read. It says we went through fire. We went through water. We went through times of hardship and turbulence. But by your wisdom, you have brought us into a wealthy place. I announce to you, Koinonia, there is a place called the wealthy place. There is a place. It's a place of plenty. It's a land of abundance. And it is absolutely left to you. I read you a scripture that the profit of the earth is for all. Take over. Take over. I have come to the end of myself. Take over, take over. I have touched the end of myself. Hallelujah, hallelujah. I have come to the end of myself. Hallelujah, hallelujah. I have come to the end of Sing it from your heart. Take over, take over. I have come to the end of myself. Take over. I have touched the end of myself. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I have come to the end of myself.
tahu de si lehe prato tu si. We see the rain of your love. We feel the wind of your spirit. Now the heartbeat of heaven. Let us hear. We see the rain of your love. We feel the wind of your spirit. Now the heartbeat of heaven. Let us hear. So let it rain. Let it rain. Open the floodgates. Let. Sit down. All vessels do not allow the same possibilities of God to reach men. The power of God is not just limited by demons and principalities and powers. The capacity to the mystery of death that is provided by the vessels can amplify the hand of God as far as providing spiritual possibilities is concerned. So it is true that God intends to do a thing within this is domain called earth. But listen to me. A vessel can be so limited and because that is the vessel God has to make do with. God will have to navigate around the allowance that the death of that vessel can provide. Listen very carefully. So that many times what we experience in the meeting is not necessarily all God could do. It was what the level of the death and the alignment of the vessel allowed. Therefore we are mandated as privileged stewards of this mystery to continue to die and to continue to expand because there is a relationship between our death and the glory that is released. Are we together now? Most of us are not aware of how many things on earth really depend on men there are so many things on earth that do not depend on God but the world of men is where the allowance or the disallowance happens and this is a deep mystery because God made it so did you know that you can have a vision of you being delivered and you being blessed? The challenge is that the miracle you want to receive does not just come generically. You see, the miracle you want to receive must be lower than the level of death I have gone through to really reach you the way it left heaven. If you are faced with a situation that is higher than the death level of that vessel, as mighty as God is, that vessel will not be able to receive the richness of what was sent to heaven. This is more than just being anointed. This is becoming a conduit for greater, heavier, and weightier dimensions of the possibilities of God to reach men. I arrived and my eyes was almost full of tears as I saw the crowds of people. I know you came to see God. We agree. It is true. But you can imagine in a meeting where people start and welcome the Lord Jesus Christ. And yet burdens remain there. Challenges remain there until a man shows up. And then the burdens begin to go. God was there right from the beginning of the service. Are we together now? This is very powerful. And every time God grants us the privilege to grow and to transit in the spirit, we rejoice not just for ourselves alone, but that we have been able to capture greater dimensions of possibilities for the sake of the saints. 
so that what could not be solved yesterday can now be solved today this is the beauty of growth this is the beauty of power this is the only justification why people should continue to listen and receive from a man it should be predicated on the fact that there is an intentional commitment to grow to expand to be able to host more of God Listen, the dynamics of the working of his word is that mediating between God, the communicator of that dimension, and man who is the final recipient, there must be men. And this is where the problem usually is. The problem is not with the power of God. The problem is not with the wisdom of God. The problem is the limitation of the vessels that he has to make do with. Are we together now? So the greater the death, the more the life, the power in experience of the reality of the Christ. Here's what the Bible says. Now unto him who is able to do, listen, exceeding, abundantly, far above all we ask or think. Then it says, according to the power, not that works in him, that works in us. He is able to do. There's no problem with his ability. But that ability, the manifestation is limited by the power that works in us. The dam can supply water. The borehole can supply water. But what enters your bucket finally is the size of the opening from the nozzle of the tap. If the tap is open so small, it can make the dam look limited. And you can be receiving drops of water and you will have to make do with what is coming. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. And so God wants to cap this revelation of this mystery of fruitfulness in our lives. God wants to wrought mighty deliverance. What is deliverance? A separation from the obstacle, the impedance that stands before you, around you. The obstacles don't have to be spirits. They can be situations. Hallelujah. If you are giving a death sentence in terms of a medical report, that report is looking for the power of God. Remember, we have taught here that 
the real activator of the possibilities of God is his divine power. His divine power flows through the channel of faith. But the final mystery that works the wonders is his divine power. The Bible says, according as his divine power that hath given us all things that pertains unto life and godliness. Tonight gathered here are several people with conditions that only God knows and only God can tell. But one thing I can tell you is that the king of glory is in this place. And not only the king of glory is in this place, the vessels that he has so engraced are also in this place. It is not a popular revelation in the church. Every time people say God is here, they are right. But the presence of the vessels that will be used by that God is often trivialized. Men are very powerful and they are very important. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Tonight, burdens will fall. Tonight, yokes will be destroyed. Tonight, God will turn the lives of people around. Hear me? There are things that have no business happening in your life that will be made to happen. Creation did not stop on the seventh day. God only rested. Please understand this. Creation did not stop. There is nowhere in the Bible that God stopped creating. Mm -mm. Creation, God only took a break. But creation continues. Not just plants and animals. To create means to make material, to create a scenario out of nothing. You have no business getting a job before the year runs. But the word can create. You have no business coming out of pain. You have no business. But the word, the Rima word, revealed, backed by the power of God. You have no business being healed today. But the Bible says to appoint unto them that mourn in Zion. To appoint means to set the date when it happens. Not only to reveal that it will happen, to make it happen. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Please hear me. Shake away unbelief from your mind as we begin to pray. Don't let the, the devil will use the flesh. This is not the first time you are attending a miracle service, he will tell you. This is not the first time men of God are praying for you. The moment those things come, you have the responsibility of fortifying your mind. Your refuse, reject it. You can insist by faith that tonight is my night. You can insist by faith. Father, the grace that has not come upon my life before tonight is the night it will come. Lord, the dimension that have not been opened to yet, this is the night I will receive. Hear me. Hear me. There are no special days for anybody. It is your faith that makes it special. The Bible said today, if you hear his voice, any day can be that today. Hmm. Are we together? Blind Bartimaeus is at the way towards Jericho. And Jesus will be passing for the last time. And the guy would have said one day he will come back again. And he would have missed it. The Bible says he cried. He cried, thou son of David, have mercy on me. Jesus looks at him and with what you would think is sarcasm. He said, what should I do for you? And then he says to regain my sight. And that man regained his sight. Only people who insist with understanding receive anything. Hoping and wishing that God will touch me is a waste of time. We'll share the grace and you'll go back frustrated. But there are people who have come. Some of you have been fasting. Some of you traveled from outside of this nation within this nation with hunger. There are people standing outside, people following online. Why will you allow the service finish and you just go back like that? You are a man of God. You have come from far. Why don't you carry something of substance that you can go back with as a witness that you met with the power of God? Is God speaking to us? One scripture and then we'll pray. 
Isaiah 61. This is a scripture that is very powerful. The hand of God is moving in overflow one. I continue to see this thing. Overflow one. I'm seeing it's an impartation. It's not just a deliverance. There is a pouring of graces that is coming on specific people. The spirit of the Lord is upon me. Because the Lord had ordained, the word anointed there is ordained. Ordained me to preach good tidings to the meek. He had sent me to bind up the brokenhearted, to proclaim liberty to the captives, the opening of prison to them that are bound. Verse 2. To proclaim the acceptable year of the Lord, the day of vengeance of our God, to comfort all that mourn, all, not some, three, to appoint unto them that mourn in Zion, giving them beauty for ashes, the oil of joy for mourning, the garment of praise for the spirit of heaviness. It says that they might be called the trees or the oaks of righteousness, the planting of the Lord that he might be glorified. Go to verse 4. And they shall build the old wastes. They shall raise up the former desolations. They shall repair the waste cities and the desolations of many generations. I believe in the power of God. I believe in the anointing of the Holy Ghost. I believe in the limitless dimension of what the Spirit of God can do upon it. How shall these things be, Mary said, seeing that I know not a man. He says the power of the highest shall overshadow, not come upon, overshadow. You are under the influence of the Spirit of God. And under the influence of the Holy Spirit, there is nothing that cannot happen. Please listen to me. Under the influence of the Spirit, time can be compressed. Under the influence of the Holy Spirit, there are things that should not happen, but can happen. Now the Lord is that spirit, the Bible says. This Lord we have been talking about is that spirit. Not just the Father seated on the throne. The Lord who delivered the righteous. The Lord who anoints is that spirit. And it says where the spirit of the Lord is, you will know that he is there by the miracles. You know that he is there, not just because you ask him to come alone. You are here. Working miracles I worship you I worship you You are here Turning lights around I worship you I worship you You are here Release I worship you I worship you in a place not just because you believe by faith but there are tokens there are representations that attest to and validate the fact that he's in the midst of his people listen let me tell you my brothers and my sisters tonight you are in for an encounter you are in for an experience it's a shift in the spirit and i want you to believe we are immersed in an atmosphere of limited possibilities limitless possibilities do not allow the devil to lie to you 
that your case is so great that God cannot meet you, that God cannot touch you. Let God be true and let every man be a liar. Hallelujah. Now, but listen, I learned this from Pastor Benny Hinn. I will share this briefly and then we'll begin to pray. Haven't worked in the healing ministry for more than half of a century. Benny Hinn shared that one of the challenges he had observed with people, when the power of God begins to move, is they are not ready to release the pain the sickness, the infirmity. You will think just because you are in God's presence and you expect Him to touch you, to heal you, He will not take something from you that you are still holding back. This mystery was demonstrated in the woman with the alabaster box. When she came to Jesus, the Bible says it was made of spikenard, pure nard, a year's wages. She broke it at His feet. And it became an instrument of worship. There are people who come with medical reports. They come with pain. They are just coming to inform God that this is what they are going through. They are not ready for the exchange yet. Listen, this is a very simple but powerful spiritual key. When you come to God, the Bible says the instruction is to believe that He exists. Number two, that He is the rewarder of them who diligently seek Him. How does He reward? There must always be an exchange. Your weakness for His strength. The miracle, the testimony. Are we together now? So you must be able to hand over everything. Here's how the Bible puts it. All my cares and burdens unto you I roll. that's a part of the song that is powerful Lord I come to you with this array of family challenges I'm handing it over to you I don't expect to go empty there are many people whether God touches you or not you will go back full because you didn't give him anything until you transfer the burden, the sickness, the Bible says, cast all your cares. It didn't say God will do it. It is your responsibility to say, Lord, I'm tired of carrying this infirmity. I'm tired of carrying this evil report. I bring it before you and I cast it down. When you are now empty, God says, I now exchange that which you have brought for what I have brought. Nobody comes before God empty. And God does not come before any man empty. The problem is there must be willingness for the exchange. God will not rest upon you when your hands are full. When your mind is full. Listen, it is very important. You are a man of God here. If all you come to give God is frustration of ministry. Lord, the church is not growing. Lord, this and that. That's, that, mm -mm, that's not the issue. Lord, I hand over everything. Call me Nana Kane. So it's time to carry your bills that is killing you and surrender it before him. It, listen, it's time to take the sickness. It's time to take the, all the concerns. Don't take some and leave some. Carry everything. Ah, I cast my crown before the high.
said, when your hands are too heavy, you cannot receive anything. You will need to take away, bring the report from your office. Bring the report from a doctor. Bring everything. When you lay it at his feet, you now lift your hand ready to receive the healing, the miracle. You don't come before God just to inform him. No. God is not interested in just being aware. He's interested in doing something. Cast your care. Listen. Coming to God and releasing everything is proof of faith. That you come before him and say, Lord, if you do not help me, I don't know where the house rent is coming from. We are 11 in this family and it's clear that there is a yoke upon this family. You may think, listen, you may think because you are always appearing before him, it means you are casting your care. No. You have to intentionally, consciously say, Lord, I don't want this sickness again. Take it. I'm tired of this life of poverty and failure. I'm tired of this life without results. Are we together now? Yes. And one of the ways that we cast our care is through worship. Another way that we cast our care is through prayer. Very powerful. You can pray and say, Lord, take everything. Take everything. Tired of the burden of ministry. Tired of the burden of my family. This is not how you designed me to work. Take it. And then when you are now empty, remember when there was no more vessel, the oil stopped. Are we together tonight? It does not take God anything to lift you. It does not take God anything to bless you. It does not take God anything to cause men to bless and honor and lift you. Listen, Benny Hinn said that many people come to his healing crusades and they are ever conscious of their sicknesses, conscious of their infirmity, and even when the power of God is flowing, the fortitude for reception is not there because they are busy meditating. The size of this problem, can God solve it? And God is wondering and saying, who told you, who, who educated you about me? Who told you about me? The Lord, the maker of the heavens and the earth. Tonight God is able to transform. Tonight God is able to heal. Hallelujah. To transform and to heal. Apostle, you don't understand the gravity of my situation. That's why. It's your mind and your perception that is being enlarged by the power of darkness. When God comes, the Bible says the mountains skip. Skip. And he clears the way for you. Is someone ready to pray? Please rise up on your feet. I'll give us two prayer points before I begin to minister. And I want us to please pray. Please pray. Hallelujah. The first prayer is you are going to ask the Lord. Listen carefully. You are going to ask the Lord to do something to your faith tonight. I agree and I concur that sometimes the prevailing challenges can be so great and so mighty. You will sit down and begin to wonder in our finite minds. How will God navigate this and bring and birth this miracle for me? Are we together now? This is where the spirit of faith comes. The faith of God. It says, this is the victory that overcomes even our faith. You're going to pray, Lord, my faith is strong. I believe you. I believe you. Lift your voice and pray. Let it be from the depth of your heart. Tonight, my faith is strong. I believe that this is the night. The night when you transform the night when you heal the night when you deliver the night when you turn my family around is someone pray 
This is the night of your power. The night of your glory. This beginning of miracles. Did Jesus in the presence of his disciples and manifested his glory. Manifest your glory, O God. Father, help my unbelief. I reject unbelief. They limited God in the wilderness by saying, Can God make a way? Can God make a way? You are in ministry, pray. Tonight is a night when you expand, when you receive. You are in business, pray. Career, pray. You are in ministry, pray. For your family, pray. Release your faith. Shila barakatosa la Raka parodo soprata la baruda selekash. Raka taparada barado selebrade shale kurianda kasalabad. Hallelujah. Listen. Prayer point number two. The Bible says, Ye have not because ye ask not. You have not. Because you ask not. He said, ask and you will receive that your joy may be complete. Ask and you will receive. He didn't say, give us any day. Give us this day. Our daily bread. Listen, when you come to God, it is not only important that you are aware of who he is. But you must come to God stating specifically the way and the manner that you desire or the area that you trust him to step in and come through for you for. Every time Jesus would meet with a blind man, a lame man, he would ask them, what do you want? That you are lame does not mean you want to stand. You must be able to verbalize your requests. You must be able to communicate. Listen, I know that many of you have written your prayer requests, but I want to give you the next two or three minutes alone with God. Open your mouth and state the things that you desire by faith to happen to you tonight. Lift your voice and pray. Someone is talking to the Lord. Communicate your expectation. When the Lord turned again the captivity of Zion, we were like them that three. Our mouths were filled with laughter and said, They among the hidden, the Lord had done great things for us. It says, The Lord had done great things for us, whereof we are glad. Then it says, Turn again our captivity like the streams of the south. Lift your voice and pray. Pray with faith in your heart. Palabaruta shalabragada baladabo. Granta lato shalagradida da baladaba. Someone is praying. Lord, my ministry is about to catch fire. There is a dimension of grace that must land upon my life. There is an operation of the Spirit that must rest upon me. Is someone praying? I will never be the same. I've touched your grace. My life is changed. I will never.
person please look up it is not very difficult for a man's situation to change god is not a magician you will need to release your faith with understanding you are before the god of all flesh the doer the walker of wonders he's truly a miracle worker please believe in miracles believe in miracles they are not a fabrication of human intelligence no no god can work miracles god does miracles god delivers god heals god lifts god transforms god sets free that's what his grace can do Never be the same I've touched your grace My life must change I will never stay the same I've touched your grace My life is changed I will never preach the same I've touched your grace My life is changed I will never see the same I've touched your grace My life is changed Hallelujah Hallelujah In the atmosphere of God's glory Listen, don't wait until you are called by prophecy. Don't wait until you are prophesied upon. Let your heart be open to receive. Let your heart be opened to rise in the spirit. I want to pray now. Please listen. Listen to me. The power of God is very strong here. Let's work together now, guys. Deliverance, when kept within the boundaries of the word of God, is powerful. Listen, because for many of us, let me tell you this, I submit to you. Listen, please don't inconvenience the guests, the space is alright, just, just let them be, please. Listen, it's an interesting thing that many believers are unwilling to accept, that behind many tragedies are spirits. Please understand this behind many operations listen when jesus was going to calm the storm every storm is made of two things wind and water you can see the water but you cannot see the wind every storm is made of wind and water there is no storm that is made of water alone jesus rebuked the water he rebuked the wind and the water was still there is no problem that is as a physical problem there are spirits back of it whether it is financial marital spiritual one of the biggest deceptions of darkness is to believe that your issue is just sociological or just marital no sir no sir there are spirits more spirits than men on the earth in one man there was a legion in one man that's to tell you how much scarce bodies are on earth for these spirits six thousand spirits in one man please listen to what i tell you your financial situation can be masquerading itself and dribbling you all around and it, yes there are principles here and there but hear me you are not free until the spirit that sponsor the operation is dealt with are we together there are you can only judge situations by what has affected you the one that has not affected you yet is there but just because it has not happened yet you may not know so the secret is to address the spirits behind it and not wait for them to create different scenarios that show you they are there
Are we together? When we pray and minister to people, listen, we are, we are, a, very, we are a very balanced, Bible-based ministry. And let me tell you this by the Spirit of God. You do not help men when you leave the spirits that is back of their situations to go back with them. Now, I know that here and there people abuse these things and do all kinds of nonsense that are not within the jurisdiction of Scripture. This is not what we are talking about. We are talking of liberty that is provable. That you can walk out before the service is done. You are seeing the evidence that this is what has masqueraded itself. You will never be the same. You've touched His grace. Your life must change. You will never be the same. You've touched His grace. Your life must change. You can be a man of God here, greatly ministry, you are anointed, but things may not be working. And you may just think the issue is just ministry ethics, preaching well, that is wonderful. But let me tell you, he said, I desire once and again to come to you, but Satan hindered us. It is not only angels that are on assignment, there are spirits on assignment. There are demons on assignment. There are powers that are on assignment. Zechariah chapter 1 verse 18. What seest thou? Four horns. These are the horns that have lifted up themselves against Judah, against Jerusalem, and against Israel. That these horns have made it that no man doth lift his head. He said, but I have sent four carpenters. It's a reality. Behind many families are spirits. Behind many medical reports are spirits. Behind many repeated patterns of frustration are spirits. Oh, 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 oh. my help has come. shared the testimony of a gentleman many years ago he was in ministry and um, I had the opportunity to counsel him and while I was talking with him as he entered my room I saw a spirit just entering with him and I looked at this dear gentleman lovely adorable wonderful person and I was politely going to hint him to say sir the Lord is already showing me what is behind your problem. And ah, the gentleman just shot me down and said, no, no, no. Don't talk to me about this and that. I said, that's all right. No problem. I respect you. I do this. Let me just pray with you. That's all I requested from him. The last thing he could remember was me beginning to pray. And then when he recovered from himself, like almost an hour later on, he got up. And for the next three days, this gentleman kept reaching me. And said, Apostle, you have rattled my theology. What is this? Doors began to open like a charm in that gentleman's life. Listen, I hope you know that there was a relationship between the doors that were closed and the chains in the hand of Paul and Silas. It's very strange. They were bound hand and feet, the Bible says, at midnight. They lifted up their voices, they prayed and they sang. Suddenly, there was an earthquake because God himself came. And then, listen, the Bible says the moment there was that earthquake, the chains by themselves fell. Immediately the chains fell. He said, all doors open, not some. All doors. There was no use of key. The key was that chain. As the chain fell, the doors opened. Please, I'd like you to pray in one minute. Father, if there is any spirit entity that is back of my situation, it must live by the spirit and the grace of God. Lift your voice and pray.
Ela baruta shalaka rapaka to zebradia. Prante la subra haska barutia. E gredu si ala haska baruta si ala bas. Shali barato salabadusi. By the power of the Holy Ghost. Tonight in the name of Jesus. Every spirit that is not of the Christ, that is back of the situation around my life, my family, my business, my ministry, pray. Hallelujah. You see, the power of God is already touching people. Listen. I'm going to take a few minutes tonight to really address this issue of spirits because they are real. They are very, very real. Very real. Hallelujah. I have met so many spirits in my life. I've had so many encounters. That's not the basis of believing they are there. Scripture already tells us they are there. But let me tell you they are there. And they are not there doing nothing. They are there causing pain. They are there manipulating families. They are there projecting things that are not of the Christ. But the Bible says, now the Lord is that spirit. And where the spirit of the Lord is, there is liberty. Let's pray. I want to begin to pray now. Please listen. Whether or not you are an usher, I'd like you to help those under the anointing. We are going to do a lot of praying this night while I'm ministering. Um, Please participate in the prayer. Prayer is very powerful when done with understanding. Are we together? Now I want to pray for you and then begin to minister to people. Because there are real spirits behind people's situations. Hallelujah. First, I want you to bring out now. I'm not going to say anything. God is giving me an instruction. The power of God, I'm already seeing something like a blue smoke rising out of people. And these are spirits. And when that happens, the power of God will come upon them. I want you, whether outside or inside, just begin to bring them out here. We are going to pray and call on that name now. But the Lord is revealing to me. You will be very surprised. Some of you are standing for yourself, standing for your family. Please bring them out. This is the instruction God is giving. Except God is not God. There is no spirit that is back of any one situation that will remain after tonight. Please quickly just bring them out. I'm seeing the power of God. I don't know why God is giving me this instruction. Even the lawful captive shall be delivered. Even the lawful captive shall be delivered. Even the lawful captive shall be delivered. I will contend with them that contend with you. Even the lawful captive shall be delivered. Even the lawful captive shall be delivered. Please bring them out. Let's just walk with what the Holy Ghost is doing. The strangers that must come out of their hiding place and let you be and let your family be. There's fire burning in this place. One more minute and then we'll pray. God is still locating people inside and outside. It's time for your liberty and your liberty in full. In full by the Spirit. Establishing the victory of the Christ over every life, every destiny. Every 
Alfredo Celica Fusia Dabash. We are ready to pray. Please lift your hands. Let me pray now. I'm seeing fire. That fire is coming on people as I pray. In the name of Jesus Christ, the Son of the living God, as you shout that name, Jesus, I declare by the blood of the eternal covenant that every legal access upon which the devil is laying claim over lives, over bodies, over finances, over destinies, I invoke help that woman by the blood of the eternal covenant. It must go now at the count of three shall Jesus, one, two, three. The pakos seketata, rekete kete kete, the proska barata. I cause darkness by the power of the Holy Ghost. Bring them out in the name of Jesus. I command the powers that be by the blood of the eternal covenant that everything that binds men to spirits binds men to realities in the spirit. I come against it by the God of Jeshuron. Please bring them out. We release a sound in the realm of the spirit. We declare sounds of victory. We are still praying, my God. Chains. I'm seeing chains in the spirit. One more time, you are going to shout that name. Lord, if there is anyone here under any kind of chain, the Bible says to release them that are bound. As you shout that name, no matter how long that chain has stayed, it's time for you to be released. Are you ready now? Thank you, Father, for the honor of your word. One, two, three, shout Jesus. I break those chains now. I break those chains now. I break those chains now. Over families. Over businesses. I break those chains now. Hallelujah. The Lord is showing me the vision of a graveyard. I'm seeing the vision of a graveyard. And the Lord wants me to rebuke the spirit of the grave. The spirit of Hades. I stand by the God of heaven. And I declare right now. Anyone covenanted to the power of the grave. The covenant with death. The covenant with the grave. By fire. May that fire fall on you now. The covenant with the grave. The covenant with death. I speak by the anointing of the Holy Ghost. Be free now. Be liberated now. Be free now. Hallelujah. Now listen. We are going to pray for the sick. But I'm sensing a unique grace for the healing of growths and lungs. Growths and lungs. This is what I'm seeing. I'm seeing like a woman on a surgical table. This is what I'm seeing. I'm speaking right now. Every spirit behind the infirmity. My God, I'm seeing fire fall on people. Right now in the name of Jesus. Every lump, every growth fibroids. Malignant growth, cancerous tissues by the Spirit of the Living God. Let the life and the power of God touch you now. Let the life, help them please. Let the life and the power of God, in the name of Jesus, I command those growths to leave those bodies now. I command them to dissolve now. Help that lady please. By the power of the Holy Ghost. Growths. 
I'm still seeing growth coming out of people's bodies. Swellings of all kinds. This is not limited to women alone. Including men. Be free now in the name of Jesus. And we will never settle for less. We know there's more that's found in and we will never settle for less. We know everyone here in front in this overflow and all the overflows I declare that the spirits that lay claim upon any aspect of your life I stand by the rod of a higher priesthood and I command them to leave now pack your load and go at the count of three one two three go 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 out of their destinies now out of their lives forever out of their lives forever out of their homes forever Forever. Hallelujah. Please pay attention. We are still praying. Now, the Lord is showing me something that I don't see very often. I'm seeing an old gate and I'm seeing chains on it with a padlock. This is a sign of stagnation. You are here and mysteriously, you have been in the same position. You try to move. You try to push. I'm about to smash that gate to pieces. Not to open it, to stamp it down. He has broken the gates of brass and cut the bars of iron in thunder. Now help them please. Listen. I want you to shout Jesus from the depth of your heart. I decree and declare every destiny here that has been tied down by men, by systems, by spirits so that you cannot move by this shout of the healer tonight. I declare every gate crushed and comes down now. Are you ready? At the count of three. One, two, Prophesy to you, move forward, go forward, go forward, go forward. Stagnation comes to an end. Ritro Apakoto Shala, Rekete Kete Kete, Baruz Kaba, Embreketo Seleto Sabaka. Stagnation comes to an end. Retrogression comes to an end. Hallelujah. Who is Bukola? I'm hearing a name Bukola. Bukola. Our time is gone. There is still a lot to do. Who is Bukola? Don't worry. Don't force and rush those who are standing in front. You are Bukola. Where are you coming from? Let me pray for you, my dear. Stand up and I'll pray for you. You are also Bukola. My dear, hold my hands. This is my... In the name of Jesus, this chain that I'm seeing, be loose now. In the name of Jesus, I lose you from that chain. It is broken now and broken forever. In the name of Jesus. The Lord is showing me someone, you walk in first bank. You walk in first bank. Who is that person? You need a serious miracle now. You walk in first bank. First bank. Let's hurry up, please. You walk. Who is that first bank? All of you are Bukola. Ma, let me speak to you. The grace for wealth. Stand up. I'm looking at you and I'm seeing currencies falling on you. And the Lord is telling me that there is a strange grace for wealth. 
this, this, is, this should be Kingsley's wife. In the name of Jesus, I decree and declare by the Spirit of the Lord, let that word come to pass now. I release you by the power of prophecy into that dimension. Prepared blessings by the Spirit. In the name of Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. I'll pray for everyone, but the power of God is going to come on one of you now. Very mighty anointing is coming on one of you, and God is setting that person's family free. One of these bukolas, right? So the power of God is coming on you, one of you. It, this is not something small. It's a, a mighty outpouring of the power of God. When that happens, um, I will just identify that one. Who works in First Bank? First Bank, you are a staff. Huh? No, you are not a staff of First Bank, you are on contract. Is that true? You are on contract. I will still pray. This person I'm seeing is a bona fide staff of the bank. I want to pray for you because I'm seeing something that can cost you your job. Father, show this, my dear brother, mercy by the grace of God. Look at me, sir. I'm seeing a whirlwind on your head. I need to pray against confusion and pray against stagnation. I declare in the name of Jesus, you are set free now and you are free forever. In the name of Jesus. Please make sure you are observing the ladies. The power of God is going to come on one. That's the instruction God is giving me. It's very mighty anointing. When it comes on that one, I want to pray for them. Your father is a general in the army. Who is that? Your dad is a general in the army. I need to pray. We need to rebuke conspiracies. The Lord is showing me your father is it a general in the army. Real army, military. Please, if you are that person, I want you to come. If you are that person, I want you to come. I want to pray for you. This is conspiracy. In the name of Jesus, over her family, let there be a mighty deliverance. In the name of Jesus Christ. In the name of Jesus Christ. I pray for all of you for the various reasons why you have come out. In the name of Jesus Christ, may the Lord himself give you testimonies. Very strange testimonies. In the name of Jesus Christ. God bless you. The Lord is showing me a vision. I'm seeing a family of five ladies. There's no marriage. One, two, three, four, five. Five ladies. Nobody has settled down. Where are you? Please come. Where are you coming from, my dear? From Joss. I want to pray. You are five of you. All alive. Five ladies. No one has settled down. What do you do? Stuff, Wait, Sterling Bank. Sterling Bank. Yes. You will leave the bank soon. Amen. Listen to me. There is another job that is coming for you. Amen. When that job comes, don't fight it. It's the will of God. You hear what I'm saying? I'm not saying you should go and retire now, but I'm telling you that another job is coming. Let's pray. It's not normal. We need to break this. I'm seeing three ladies in my vision. I don't know why there's only one person here. These five, five families. Please make sure you don't tell lies. Don't just come and stand here if it's not. I will pray for everybody. Five families, none, not one person has settled down. Ladies, now, don't cry, my dear. Jesus is in this place. Release the family now. Release the family now. I'm looking at this lady and I'm seeing coals of fire and I'm seeing a horn on it. Release the family now. There is someone here. This is a very mysterious thing that happens to you. In a very strange way. This happens especially when you pray for extended periods your whole body starts itching you in a funny way you know how someone under the influence of a, what they call that drug chloroquine that's what happens to you like physically you begin to scratch your body i must pray for you why is she here please you are the one come madam you too where are you coming from ma you are coming from abuja come we we'll attend to the photos you are holding here, eh? but for now, we need to pray for you. This is, this is not just evil, very evil. I have to pray for you. 
You too, my brother. Where are you coming from? You see, my dear people, I'm, no, I'm not saying if your body is itch, listen to the, the, the issue. I just saw fire, this rope, right down, just like a sword of fire just passed. I don't know who that is for, but in the name of Jesus, let it bring emancipation right now. Right now in the name of Jesus. Look at me, my dear. You believe in Jesus? I bring you life from this kingdom that we represent. Be free now from this demonic, satanic oppression. In the name of Jesus. Uh, dear auntie, let me pray for you. Just keep her there. Can you hold my hands, madam? I want to pray for you right now in the name that is above all names. Help her. Be free right now. I curse the workings of darkness over your body and over your life. In the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Five families, hold my hands. Look at me. Shout Jesus as loud as you can. In the name of Jesus, I decree and declare, let it be over. Let the doors be opened. In the name of Jesus Christ. I want to pray for you, my dear. I'm looking at you physically, but in the realm of the spirit, I'm seeing an arrow inside your head. I need to pray. There is infirmity that has been projected in your body. I hope you understand what I'm saying. Can I pray for you? Is that all right? Father, help this lady. In the name of Jesus, hold my hands. I decree and declare by the power of the Holy Spirit, be free from this that does not name the name of Christ. I set you free from it now in the name of Jesus. Five ladies, I'll just lay my hands on you. Be free right now. Let the doors be opened. Be free right now. Kai, let her go. Out now in the name of Jesus. She's also here. Your dad is a general in the army. Where are you from? Gombe State. You are in Abuja, but you are from Gombe State. I like us to pray. Can I pray for you? I'm not a prophet of doom, man. Eh? Don't be afraid. Look at me. Those who plan evil, in the name of Jesus, they will not live to execute their wickedness. You see, Ba, my brothers and my sisters, let me teach you something about life. The Bible says a man's enemy shall be the members of his own household. Father, preserve the life of this our general in the name of Jesus Christ. In the name of Jesus Christ. There is a family now, God is breaking the plague of death. The power of God is coming. I don't know whether they are inside or outside. The plague of death is being broken right now. There is a mighty anointing that is coming on that wise to set them free from the plague of death. Please come very quickly. I'll just touch you. I don't know why they are here, but we have to hurry up very quickly. Just a touch. Believe by faith. It is over. Out of her now. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Sir, where are you coming from? I'm coming from Abuja. From Abuja? Yeah. What do you do, sir? I'm a minister. You're a minister of the gospel. I want to pray for you. Where, where, where are you coming from? Where do you come your state of origin? Five. Do you plan to go this Christmas? I'm not sure. But I'm not. Huh? I'm, I, I went for operation. Sort of. Listen, that's why I want to talk to you. I'm looking at this man. And I'm seeing... You were supposed to have died. It's because of the intercession of men that you are alive. But then, I'm, I'm not a prophet of doom. We, anything God shows, we cancel. You get the point now? I'm seeing this man going in a bus. And I'm seeing a truck. I will not mention, I'm not being antagonistic. But the truck did not just shift your car. It climbed it. And everybody gone like that. You see, when God shows a thing, it is because of the strength he has put in his church. The power to change it completely. Are we together? I want to pray for you. You are very sick. And even the surgery has not solved the problem. Because what I'm seeing is still there. Please hold my hand, sir. Father, in the name of Jesus Christ, the Son, 
let this man not be given to the sword let him not be given to the grave in the name of jesus i knock on the door of life and i speak to you sir by the power of the holy ghost be set free i fortify you by the power of god's word and i declare death will be far from your dwelling i speak that your going out is blessed and safe even your coming in is blessed and it is safe in the name of jesus may the lord show you mercy continually in jesus name i pray family of five i need to pray hold my hands Oh yeah yeah oh yeah yeah oh yeah yeah oh yeah yeah Yahweh Oh yeah yeah say oh In the name of Jesus, I lose you and your siblings. Everything that is an orchestration of darkness, I speak by the Spirit of the Living God. You are loose now. In the name of Jesus, I declare liberty. I restore dignity and honor. What is happening to you? I'm seeing an angel of the Lord going down here. There's somebody. The same thing is happening to someone there. The same thing God is doing here, God is doing to a lady there. I declare be liberated right now in the name of Jesus. Please come, sir. Let me just touch you by faith. In Jesus' name, be set free. Come. In Jesus' name, be set free. 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 There is someone, I think you are in ministry, you are in overflow one. The power of God is going to come upon you in a mighty way now. Please carry the person and bring the person here. We have to hurry up. I'm seeing the power of God touch the person. Hallelujah. I'm about to release that grace for speed again. Please come. May the Lord bless you. In the name of Jesus. Ah, 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 ah. Shala superuskiata. I'm seeing the map of Nigeria. And I'm seeing blood dripping around the east. And the Lord is saying, those who are easterners. Is this, is a, this is a sign and a wonder. When God shows me a map, whenever I mention that location, anyone who is oppressed within that location, the power of God comes on them. Right now, I'm seeing the east. The east. I release that power now. The Lord is bringing liberation. Eastern states. I'm seeing blood drip upon them. In the name of Jesus, in the name of Jesus, I'm seeing an elderly woman with sharp pain around her lumbar vertebra. The power of God is touching that woman right now. Who is the person? Mommy, you're welcome. One to pray. Ah. Not everything that looks like sickness is sickness. There are many things that are projections of darkness. Are we together? Mommy, let me pray for you. In the name of Jesus, who is the Christ of God. Help her please. In the name of Jesus, I command that spirit. Now, by the power of the Holy Ghost, release our mother. In the name of Jesus. Mommy, I command that infirmity, that plague and that yoke of darkness. Be gone right now. In the name of Jesus Christ. In the name of Jesus Christ. Let me just pray for these two people now. This lady, where is she coming from? Okay. 
there is it will surprise you how the grace for intercession will come on you this lady this fair lady i'm talking to you in the name of jesus i speak by the power of the holy ghost may that grace mantle you and turn you into a sign and a wonder the lord will show you things in your dreams he will show you things in visions please bring our mommy for me let me pray in the name of jesus christ um just touch her back for me in the name of jesus christ i declare right now this is not sickness this is the spirit of death i command the spirit of death hell and the grave to leave our mother right now by the power of the holy spirit complete emancipation complete emancipation in the name of jesus christ in the name of jesus christ in the name of jesus christ The Lord is asking me to stretch my hands just here. I don't know why, but this is what he's saying. Just right here to the wall. I'm seeing, I'm seeing people's stomach, the abdominal region. I'm seeing things like chains. Just bring those under the anointing as I'm talking. I'm seeing things like chains. These are devils of infirmity. The Lord is asking me to just stretch my hand. Please just allow me to do my madness with God here and let the lord set these people free please bring them out we're hurrying up now in the name of jesus I place my hand on my stomach as a point of contact. Every planting that is not of God, in the name of Jesus Christ, be free from it now. Yeah. Hallelujah. The power of God is coming on one of the ushering ladies. One of these ladies with the jerseys. I'm seeing an anointing. I know you are ministering, but this is a miracle God is bringing for you, for your family. One of the ushering ladies. I don't know whether they are inside, outside. I'm seeing an anointing on one of the ushering ladies. This is, this is liberty that God is bringing right now. Shalus Karita Hasubadia. In the name of Jesus, my dear, look at me. Shame and reproach is living your life now. Shame and reproach is living your life now. The garment of shame and reproach is living your life now. Why is this gentleman here? You are not the anointing outside? Come. Hold my hands. In the name of Jesus, I pray for you. Come. You, lifting your hands. Run. Come. Your time of change has come. Where are you coming from? It's, it's all right. It's okay. Don't worry. That's why you are here. Do you know me? That's why I'm saying you just relax. You were in the crowd and God brought you here. Do you know why God brought you here? Because things are not working at all in your family. God needs to turn things around. If I don't pray for you, what I'm seeing is you are celebrating Christmas morning and blaming people being the reason why somebody died and another person died because I'm seeing the spirit of death hovering around your family. But the Bible says now the Lord is that spirit. Let me pray for you. Hold my hands, my dear. What did you study? Do you have a job? I'm, I'm a copper in all those states. I'm, work, I'm, I'm a copper. I'm starting an NGO. I want to pray for you. The favor of God that will come upon you from this miracle service will surprise you. You believe that? In the name of Jesus, I stay the power of evil over your family. And in the name of Jesus, I release you to a realm and a dimension of strange favor. Receive that grace in Jesus' name. We're going to pray for the sick shortly, but I want to release this grace for speed. Please, I want you to believe there is a real grace for speed. If you don't have it, you don't have it. Period. There is a grace. Kashina, Kamuna, 
Let's pray. Listen. It's a mystery how God brought me into this understanding. When you understand how speed works, you will never feel bad for any delay in your life. It's a strange system that insists that you catch pace with destiny. It works mysteriously. It works by compressing time. 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 Dominion over time is what speed is about. I want to pray for someone now. Sirkin Sarakuna. Father, please. I know that when I begin to pray inside and outside, people will begin to run physically. Honestly, why God does it, I don't know. I think it's just a prophetic acting of what is happening in the realm of the spirit. But every time I pray this prayer, the hand of God comes upon people and you find out that sometimes they begin to run physically. And I'm going to pray that prayer now. There are people here, God wants to take 10 years and put in one year. God wants to take one year five years and put in one month is it not written in your bible that i will restore the years god does not only restore things he restores time whoever can restore time must be god himself are we together in the name of jesus i decree and declare right now Everyone under the sound of my voice, inside, outside, Parushalata, I declare at the count of three, Father, let this grace for speed, restoration, the mystery that gains time, may that grace fall upon people within this auditorium, overflow, one, two, three, four, online, in the name of Jesus, receive that grace, one, two, three, take that grace now. Take that grace, speed, keparu shalata, restoration, I prophesy, pursue, overtake, without fail, recover, pursue, overtake, without fail, recover, in career, pursue, in marriage, pursue, in ministry, pursue, I'm speaking by the spirit, pursue, overtake, recover, pursue, help that woman please. Overtake, recover financially, pursue, overtake, recover in your influence, pursue, overtake, recover in your academics. I pray for students, pursue, overtake, recover, pursue, overtake, recover. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. The person who will run out now under the anointing, don't stop the person, just hold the person. By the person's self, mysteriously by the Spirit, there is a prophetic word. And this is how God told me. It's a force that will come upon the person. Please help her. It will happen by the Spirit. They will come out by themselves. A strong anointing is not something you can resist. This is a sign and a wonder. How God does it, I don't know. Sir 
That's why I'm standing. Three more people. It's a wind. It's a force of the spirit. Hi. The wonder walking power of Jesus. How the church has limited him. Limited him. Limited him. Please help them. Make sure they don't injure themselves. Kashina, Kamuna, Sir King Aljana, Yana, Kashina, Kashina, Kamuna, Sir King Aljana. ones that have come out by the spirit i'm declaring right now the chains that hold your feet i'm seeing their legs specifically their legs with chains i lose you now in the name of jesus i release you to destiny i release you to destiny i release you to destiny by the power of the holy ghost no more delay no more retrogression by the spirit of the living god The force of God's power birthing possibilities in the lives of people. The power of God is coming on this gentleman, this one wearing polo. Yes, my friend, the anointing of the Spirit is coming on you in a very mighty way, and I'm seeing a gate open before you, and night is at your back and day is in your front i prophesy to you what i'm seeing and to everyone who connects with this prophecy i take night behind you and i command your morning to stand before you i take night behind you and i command the sun to shine before you in the name of jesus christ Everyone lift your voice say after me in the name of Jesus. Please shout it, say in the name of Jesus. I decree and declare by the anointing of the Spirit. I am breaking limits. I am moving forward. Lift your voice and begin to prophesy. Breaking limits. In the name of Jesus. I make progress. Is someone praying? I make progress by the power of the Holy Ghost. Hallelujah. We're about to pray for the sick now. Please listen. When we take our time to pray for the sick like this, the anointing of the Holy Spirit is coming on someone just around the ministers. As I came here, I just spoke. I just saw fire just resting. Strong anointing from the front to my back. Strong anointing. The Spirit of God is resting upon people. Moving, shifting by the Spirit of the living God. How forcible. Pastor, there is a grace coming on you. The HICC pastor, a strong anointing, shifting you by the Spirit, step into a new dimension. Kashina, Kamuna, Sir King Aljana, Na Na Na, Kashina, Kamuna, New dimension.
dimensions. We want to pray for the sick now. Listen very carefully. I believe in miracles. There are people here who are standing, trusting God to touch various aspects of their lives, their bodies tied. There is still a strong anointing around the minister section here. I'm seeing impartations, real graces, impartations coming by the Spirit. Impartations. People are drinking of wines. Ima, lift your hands. I amplify the prophetic upon your life in the name of Jesus. I I amplify the prophetic in the name of Jesus. Hold your hands, two of you. Please help them. Take that place in the name of Jesus. Amplify the grace. You step into new dimensions in the spirit. The spirit and the power of the word. Your words from today will be like fire. Fire. Refine us fire. Sarukin Sarabuna Yana Na Yana Na Sarukin Sarabuna Dan, come. Hold my hands. Grace is given for you to rise. No more delay. I place a ladder before you and I shift you by the Spirit to the amazement of many. May your life change, change like day and night. Praise the Lord. Thank you for your patience. Please rise. Let's stretch our hands here. Unto thee that answers prayer shall all flesh come. Prophecy, no matter how accurate, is limited by time and the openness of the vessel. But that every time, this is not a ritual, it's a revelation to come before the God who can answer. Listen, there are things here written that are death sentences. There are things written here that will take only God to provide a miracle for there are things written here that are age-long captivities some of them even predate our coming to the earth but there is a name that is above every other name the bible says wherefore god hath so highly exalted him and given him an office a name a title the bible says that at the mention of that name everything in the earth in heaven under the earth will bow every knee and then every tongue will confess that Jesus is Lord even to the glory of the Father I cannot begin to tell you the kind of tearsome testimonies that have come out of this this is not a ritual there is a covenant that sponsors the, uh, the answered prayer here and one more time and the last time really for this year I want us to agree in the next two, three minutes. Wherever you are, just stretch your hands as a point of contact and begin to pray that the Egyptian that I see today, in the name of Jesus the Christ of God, I will see them no more forever. Is someone praying? Shalakura Sibahaskadaba. Every evil report, orchestrations of darkness, if it had a beginning tonight is the end pray don't worry for those of you at the overflow who are still being ministered to just focus as the ministers minister to you while we pray
of Jesus we decree and declare that these Egyptians you see today you will see them no more forever father we bring before you every situation here marital situations financial situations spiritual situations career situations in the name of Jesus we bring them under the covering of the blood every legal access upon which these requests continue to remain by the blood of the eternal covenant we nullify that access now in Jesus name Father, by this prayer, we blot out handwritings and ordinances that speak against God's people. We declare them nullified forever. I stand as one sent by the Spirit of the Lord, and I declare, receive strange testimonies. Before this year runs out, in the name of Jesus, let every request tabled here be turned into testimonies. <laughs> testimonies are largely answered through men. When it leaves heaven, most times the testimonies we need we need them in their material form there are few testimonies that we need them just in the spirit form i'm praying every human agent that must partner with god partner with the systems of god to see to it that this request is granted we compel them by the spirit to do so now in the name of jesus every death sentence written here in the name of Jesus we cancel it now yes. hallelujah let it be done so shall it be we establish it in the name of Jesus now we want to round up by prophesying over our lives this for me you've heard me say this is the best part of the service because this is where everybody gets an opportunity for spiritual realities to be created in your life please i want you to agree with me every proclamation that will come receive it by faith believe it and shout a loud amen as proof that you believe it are we together in the name of jesus christ delay comes to an end now Delay comes to an end now. Delay comes to an end now. Everything representing shame and reproach in your life and that of your family. It comes to end this night in the name of Jesus. pray for your spiritual life the kind of encounter that you have not had from January till now strange encounters revelations of heaven receive that grace in the name of Jesus and if our God is for us then who could ever stop us and if our God is with us then before you and the next dimension I decree and declare by the spirit of grace that was upon the nation of Israel standing before Jericho I command every world go down flat go down flat financial walls go down flat career walls go down flat in the name of Jesus And the 
king sent for Joseph and they brought him out of his dungeon. Every man that must send for you to come out from where you are to where you need to go to, the gatekeepers of the dimensions that you seek to enter, I compel favor from them to you. I compel favor from them to you. In the name of Jesus. There are angels that herald the influence of a man. Listen, honor is a grace. When that grace is not upon you, no matter how noble you are, you will never be honored. Honor is a grace. And when that grace is on you, only God can take it away. It says, and Jabez was more honorable than his, not more prosperous not more favored more honorable many people do not know what honor is the fortitude for preference there is an unction from god that fishes you out of the crowd places you in a position where the eyes of men must discern you reward you recognize that which god has invested within you listen to me there are many gifted people the eye that can bless has not seen you there are many men of god the eyes that can discern and lift you is not there let me pray for you there is a grace for honor therefore god even thy god hath anointed you with an oil of gladness that sets you above your fellows i pray for you in the name of jesus may the mantle that makes for honor territorial honor honor at a national level in the name of jesus receive that grace now receive that grace now You will be surprised to see the workings of this grace in your life. When the grace for honor and favor is upon you, you will always be found in the midst of your destiny helpers. Listen, it's a mystery that cannot be explained. You will be suspended until they appear. Then you come. Listen is a waste to fight battles without reward. David said, what shall be given to the man that will do this to Goliath? Sometimes it's a waste to do noble things in the face and the presence of people who have no fortitude to discern and to reward. I pray for you. May the Lord position your destiny helpers and cause them to love you and to honor you. The Lord asked me to wear this as a prophetic representation of what He is still doing. It is still our year of extraordinary fruitfulness. I stand by the God of heaven. Have the faith to believe. Don't sit down questioning. Leave your mind and trust God. It is within His power to make great. He takes a man from the dunghill overnight and turns his life around. I'm praying for you. For some of you, before this year is over, step into a dimension of prepared blessings. Prepared blessings. Prepared parushalata. I release you into a dimension of prepared blessing. Listen, believers, I want you to believe this. Our time is gone, but I want you to believe this. Do not doubt what the power of God can do. Hallelujah. We're rounding up in the name of Jesus Christ, the Son of the Living God. The grace that will produce results of wonders in your life. May that grace rest upon you now. Prepared 
hear blessings that take you to realms. Ten years put in one month, I release that grace upon you. Listen, these graces are not some carnal show of wealth. No, they are time redemption systems. Understand what they are. They seek to conquer time and give you the convenience and the allowance to serve the purposes of the kingdom. In the name of Jesus, the grace for ease that brings you into supernatural results. Receive that grace right now. Receive that grace in the name of Jesus. I pray for every family represented here. The sound of mourning, the sound of pain and anguish by the Spirit of the living God, let it come to an end this night. Everything that has refused to work in your life by the power of the highest, I compel it to begin to work now. you do not know may they carry glad tidings about you to the ears of your helpers in the name of Jesus Christ I pray for you the presence of God the weightiness the substance of his presence that must rest upon you especially if you are in ministry by the power of the Holy Ghost be a carrier of divine presence In the name of Jesus, everyone here trusting God for a job, before this year runs out, may God give you a miracle job. Every family here trusting the Lord for any and every kind of breakthrough, we call upon the God of the heavens. In the name of Jesus, let there be an, a, an abundant supply of that grace. Hear me, whoever ignores you will pay for it. Hear me, any man that fights you goes down instantly. Let me say it again. Any man that fights you goes down instantly. I pray for every ministry here under the sound of my voice the grace and the wings of the spirit that will take you to dimensions untold may that grace rest upon you I pray for every man and every woman of God here the errands and the horse that will hold your hands loyal men indeed may God give them to you here who the testimony over your life is Ichabod I declare by the spirit of God a restoration happens now thou shall not be afraid of the snare of the fowler nor the noisome pestilence nor the destruction that wasted in noonday says a thousand shall fall by your side and ten thousand by your right side it says none shall hurt you but with your eyes shall you behold and see the reward of the wicked i pray for you as a bird is escaped from the snare of the fowler may you escape from every evil may you escape from every trap in the name of Jesus Christ I speak over your life go from glory to glory the remaining weeks of this year I'm speaking to you may they be weeks of strange wonders and finally let me speak over your prayer life over your word study life whatever has stolen your joy whatever has stolen your fire whatever has stolen your passion whatever has stolen your focus in the name of Jesus by fire let it be restored tonight may the gifts of the Holy Ghost operate freely in your life may you be a wonder first to yourself and then may you be a wonder to everyone around you. 
in the name of Jesus. Finally, anyone here being eyed by the spirit of death, to see to it that you will not finish this year well, to see to it that it will not be well with you and your family. Gehazi came and met the woman and said it's all well, it's all well with your household, I pray for you because the Bible says to say to the righteous it shall be well therefore I speak over you, it is well I declare over you all is well, in the name of Jesus Christ Thank you, Jesus. For all of you who have traveled from far, whether from another nation, right down here, from another city, right down here, you will go back with strange testimonies. You will carry a fire and anointing that will be worth your coming here. In the name of Jesus. Very quickly, you are here under the sound of my voice. Please, let's minimize movement. And you are saying, Apostle, I want you to give me an opportunity to give my life to Jesus Christ. You are here and you are saying, Apostle, I've seen the wonder-working power of God. I need Jesus as a matter of urgency in my life. Hear me? The Bible says, whosoever will come to him, he will in no wise cast away. Praise the Lord. Whether you are here inside or outside, there are people here who are saying, Apostle, I need Jesus. There are others who are saying, Apostle, I need restoration of my relationship with Jesus. It is never too late to reconnect with Him. Now, whether you are here, let's minimize movement, whether you are here inside or outside, we cannot close this meeting. This is the last miracle service for the year. Wherever you are, whether you are rededicating your life or you are handing your life over to Jesus for the first time, inside, outside, overflow one two three i want you to run and come and stand right in front of me here sustain the boldness to come don't be ashamed let's celebrate them as they come koinonia those coming from outside please clear the way for them above him there's no other jesus is the way jesus is the answer for the world today keep coming above him there's no other jesus is the way jesus is the answer for the world today above him there's no other jesus is the way says for God so loved you and me he proved his love by giving not taking giving his one and only begotten son now the firstborn of we the begotten that whosoever will believe in him should not perish is a law but have the way the life of God you have come many of you making this decision for the first time many of you rededicating your lives to Jesus listen it doesn't matter why you came I want you to know that there is a God who loves you desperately unashamedly and is ready to give you a new beginning lift your right hand and say this very passionately say this truthfully from the depth of your heart say Lord Jesus please if you are joining us quickly come quickly come find a space and pray this prayer from the depth of your heart say with me again Lord Jesus tonight I have heard your word I believe join them quickly say I believe that you are the son of God I believe that you died for me I believe that you shed your blood for my sin tonight I receive your life I receive the abundance of grace and the gift of righteousness and I declare that from tonight until forever I reign in life I am a child of God I belong to the family of God 
Amen. Keep your hands lifted while I pray for you. Father, thank you. You have brought these ones by your spirit. You are able to save to the uttermost, scripture says. Thank you for drawing these ones. I decree and declare by the spirit of God that every legal stand that the devil has against them is nullified tonight by the blood. I declare by the authority of scripture your sins be forgiven and I declare that the Lord grants you a new beginning from tonight. I declare that you go forward ever and backward never. The power to love and serve Jesus is released upon you. In the name of Jesus Christ. Amen and amen. Now very quickly, there are a number of you. Um, there are two gentlemen waving their hands. You can follow this aisle or this one, whichever will take you to the same place. Please follow them as we celebrate them. There will be a group of people to just receive you and just share a few things with you and you'll be back. Is this the best you can do, Koinonia? Hello, beloved in Christ. We hope this message was a blessing to you. I would want you to do something for us. If you are new here, kindly hit on that subscribe button for us. And then like this video as well. Share to your family and friends to bless them. Because we know that this message will be a blessing to their body, to their soul, and to their spirit. We would need you to do one thing for us too. Tell us in the comment section where you were watching us from. And then if you've got any testimony for us, kindly share with us. For watching in the name of Jesus, drought in your life that even when it is physical rainy season, it is still dry season spiritually, financially, and otherwise. I decree and declare, let the rain begin to fall, let the rain begin.